Just play along. Just play along. Yeah. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Georgetown School Committee meeting of Thursday, November 9th, 2017. If we could please rise for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for coming out this evening. I appreciate seeing your beautiful smiley faces out there in the audience. Uh, we do not have our student rep here this evening because I'm sure she's enjoying the long-awaited homecoming uh, dance, dance right. which uh, yes. I know I had a couple of children in my own house getting ready for it, so I hope they have a great and safe time. Uh, your children go? Um, no, one oh. there was some sickness. Oh, okay, keep them home. <laughs> Michael needs to stay yeah. home. They weren't looking forward to it. They would have gone if they could have. Yeah. Well, I hope everyone that goes has a great time. Uh, is anyone here from the public that would like to talk about anything on the agenda? Okay. We're going to move right along then. We're going to... Strategic um, plan? So we do, is there a strategic consent? plan? We want to do that? Do the consent agenda? Do we already do that? Can't I can't vote okay. on anything. Yeah. Sorry, my fault. Here, I told you. Follow my cue. <laughs> Follow your <laughs> <laughs> superintendent. Everybody, everybody else. Everybody else in the committee got it. <laughs> well, I think you were the one who instructed us I to did. do it. <laughs> You're correct. Play along, play, play along, along, people. Play along. Um, so and we will. All that means is that we can't vote tonight but because it wasn't posted. Posted. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. yes. That's all we need. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just to be clear. <laughs> Yep, just to be clear. Um, so the strategic plan update for 2016-2017. Um, properly. Right, that's right. It was posted, it wasn't posted just properly. properly. Do we, are, are we going to have a, um, any presentation I, we, I on this or just go through this? I weren't going to have a presentation if you went through it, but we're happy. Jack's here, yeah. Colin's here. Yep. Um, we can explain. You know, okay, can you are. just quickly remind me what SIP stands for? Um, where are you? Improvement. School, school, improvement. School, improvement school improvement. Okay, okay, thanks. I know, we do have our alphabet soup in education. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> so, I like so that we have a lot of greens. We do have a lot of greens. And the yellows, as you can <clears> see, <throat> there's been a lot done with them. You know, I think sometimes we are our own worst enemies because when, when we write these one-year action steps, we really should write them so that they're achievable in one year. But sometimes when we say continue to implement or, imp you know, sometimes an implementation takes more than one year. Well, Do you know what yeah. I mean? So that, that sometimes happens. But for, for, for the way we look at it, it's a continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. So as long as we're doing something toward getting to the goal and we have a plan to know what we need to do next, that's how we're sort of looking at more like a, like a cycle. Like for instance, opposed with Alice, to, we don't intend to implement Alice for one year. It's going we to be don't. many, but right. there will be continuous improvement and you know tweaks and right. But if we write we'll in the plan, out what works best seventh grade students, then we know how, that that's achievable. Right. As opposed to um, you know implement Alice, right? right, which we know has multiple steps. Um, <laughs> I don't know why we have a blank little space there. Um, so in focus area one, and Colin actually can help us with this if there's any questions. Um, but you know, we we really pretty much addressed those things on some level. When we get to focus area two, there were just a couple of things that we we didn't get to. Um, Colin, the curriculum review process for the PE department. I know Colin had we all had great hope that last year we were going to get to start a vertical team on that because we're trying to work on the strategic plan uh, for the uh, wellness policy constantly. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so that is planned for, that'll be in the action steps for this year. One of the challenges has been getting, you know, participation from, because their schedules are very different than sort of the traditional. With the health and wellness. And I think you had yes. that same situation with health and wellness at when you oh. have after school yeah. activities. This, this one, we're talking okay. about a vertical team. Okay. Setting up a vertical team. Okay. So Colin uses sometimes during PD days, sometimes it's hard to find. The, the, the professional development we do sometimes isn't as appropriate for the specialists if we're talking about, for example, a reading <laughs> program or something like that. Something like Margaret's doing with PBIS is obviously very appropriate for everyone in the school. But sometimes some of the training in particular years, guided reading, for example, would be very specifically geared to a different audience. So 
you know, there's opportunity sometimes on those PD days to, you know, bring that group together. Don't use iPads in gym class. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a, little, a little bit different. Yeah, a little bit different. So that that's a that's going to continue to be a goal. And then, um, um, Colin, in terms of the writing, the arts component, I know that was something that Julie had been working on with the interdisciplinary units. Um, is was. Was, what, what has been the discussion about that? So that was difficult for the last year since um, when I was meeting with the uh, middle school teams during their team time, arts teachers aren't a part of that team time just right. because of the schedules. Because when all the teachers have their common prep, the kids are at specials, right. which you means know. our teachers are obviously during in instruction. Um, so it hadn't been a focus of mine when we were looking at some of those interdisciplinary unit plans and doing the curriculum review. Um, so we didn't get to it last year, but hopefully this year, especially now that we have uh, middle school team leads um, that are back in the fold, they can they can uh, be a part of getting that arts component into those interdisciplinary units as well. Colin, is there anything in focus area one and two that you want to highlight that you're particularly pleased about? Or um, I don't think anything that would be of a surprise to the school committee. I'm certainly happy that we have a science curriculum and program that's up and running. We've launched a one-to-one -one program last year. A lot of the big ticket items that are now green, I, I think, are what we're all really happy about. But we all have, you know, we all pitched in together to make those things happen. Mm -hmm. Is it possible on the one to one? Is it possible, and it might be on the agenda at some point, just to get a, I'm, I'm going to say a progress report, but like, how is it actually working mm -hmm. in a classroom or a lesson? Something just to see, like, sure. yeah, I know they're there, I know they're being <laughs> used, but beyond that, like, what's going on? Yeah. So, Barbie, we can add that to, we'll find a mm -hmm. place for that in the topics that we've been discussing. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so in, any other questions on focus area one or two? Yeah, if I could just ask about, uh, under focus area one, where it says the district will increase students' writing proficiency at all grade levels. Yes. Um, so, oh, so it indicates that special education staff will continue to provide in-class support designed to target specific deficit areas in writing. Mm -hmm. So is that grades K to 12, or is that specific to Pembroke, or? No, that, that happens within both buildings. Um, in fact, in the middle school, all the English classes are co-taught at this point, but there's a special educator right in the English classroom to be able to provide extra support in those areas. And then um, there's individualized pieces to the students' IEPs where they would require services within the general education setting for writing. So that is happening across the board depending upon student needs. Okay. Um, so at the Pembroke, so it would be strict, so what's Pembroke doing in the English department? Like do they have uh, aid in each class or is it just if that child in the class has an IEP specific to some writing issues. Right, and we try to look at placement at the beginning of the year so that if we see that there's three students in third grade that require that yeah. type of support to make You'd sure put that them in they're the in the same, same class. class so that the special educator would be in that room to provide that. Okay. Support. Okay. Yeah, the goal is to get as many of the services in the classroom integrated into the general curriculum. We've been talking about yes. that with our yep. plan. But there are times when, depending on the specific needs of the student, that there is more of a pull-out model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there has been co-teaching done at Pembroke during ELA? I, I wouldn't call it co-teaching. I would say that there uh, there's several times in ELA when there's a special educator in the room to provide support, mm -hmm. but we haven't done any real training in co-teaching since I've been here. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> But at, like a strategic but, at, but at one of the but at one of the grade levels, didn't we do more of a, a consolidation and so that there could be more um, per, in in class support? I for, think we worked really hard this year to be able to provide had more many meetings support on. across the board. But um, and part of the reason that we were able to do more of it at Pembroke was um, the addition of the special educator at grade levels, so oh. that um, for grades three through six. Each of those grades just, they have one special educator per grade that's responsible for the kids within that grade level. So not having to cross grades is yeah, That was very difficult. Well, you remember that probably, Cheryl, when you were in the classroom. 
So it's very difficult. So that's that's really good. Well, I'm happy about that because I know that we is that many people uh, raise that concern about people about the kids uh, writing was not as um, it, not as well as it could have been. I know in our MCAS scores several years ago it was the same thing. So we had asked. Uh, I know we had talked about it extensively mm -hmm. about getting kids more prepared to be able to to write effectively. Right. And, and I think, Colin, the curriculum, oh, Margaret, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, Barbie, that, that actually is one of our um, goals for uh, next year in our school improvement plan is to write. So um, again, with so many other initiatives going on, writing has always kind of been on the back burner. We're working on it, but the back burner. But this year, we do want to pull it to the front and uh, focus across the content on the mm -hmm. writing. Right, because what grade is the long comp? Well, it's they don't really have them anymore. anymore. Okay. Let's talk oh. about that in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Segue into that. <laughs> Colin, though, I, um, I know that your vertical team has been working on writing. Yeah, so that's uh, so to go along with the, with the school improvement goal at Pembroke, the vertical team this year set a goal, uh, actually Tuesday, um, to look at the new MCAS writing prompts now that they're released with sample student scores. Look at those prompts the MCAS rubrics and our own school rubrics to make sure that we're setting the expectations where we need to so that when students take those assessments or when they're ready to write for a class assignment or move up to the, to the middle high school, that they've got the skills built in that they, that that's, they need. That's great. Yeah. Can, can I just ask in general, and maybe I'm, so I, I want to know more about the, the upper level grades, it is, there are, are we putting any more emphasis on grammar? Um, I mean, I know in the teaching of, of writing, you, you have to balance the, the content and developing the ideas and getting the, you know, teaching the kids to put their ideas down on paper and express themselves and all that stuff. And that's really, really important because they have to have the confidence to know that they, that their thinking processes are, are really right on target. But the, the mechanics of grammar, I feel mm -hmm. like it's been kind of pushed to a back burner. I don't think you're, you're alone in that thought because last year with the new MCAS for the first time, conventions usage, usage and, and grammar were on the writing rubrics uh, okay. for grades three through eight. Yeah. So they are now a part of what students are assessed on. And I know that we are addressing that in the upper grades. Peter, you can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, I would disagree with you wholeheartedly oh. in the high school. Yeah, yeah no, no. I, I meant like kind of way back. I'm, I don't mean to point at anyone in particular in yeah. recent no, I, history. I'm, I'm not, I just... but it's, it's one of the things that really stuck out to me when I came here. And one of the major reasons why we do so well in our MCAS and our SATs and our AP scores because we have always emphasize grammar really we actually we, we do things a little differently than a lot of high schools where we actually still have those old grammar books and that is That's part That's great. of the lessons yeah. that you can see in any one of our high school classes from any grade and uh, we also do the same with vocabulary so we right. have done that for a long time and I think that that's what makes us um, so special yep. and yep. gives us such great well, results. It's very important. No, thank you. That's great to hear. I appreciate that. I, I didn't mean it to, you know, accuse. <laughs> no, I know. You, 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 I, when you <laughs> set up a grades, I, I, I was want generalizing to, and wondering yeah. how that applies to this, the way we're teaching in this district. And you answered very nicely. So yes, so <laughs> it, and I didn't think that <laughs> at all. I was just Good. clarifying. I know that was a very, and Hank Benuti was in charge of the department. He was very strong on that. Yes. That was really yeah. important. In the yeah. middle school, we bought the vocabulary books, and you know, so we've been right. trying to get those yeah. mechanics right. definitely back. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and we made sure when he left that that was a part that was going to be carried on. Good. Great. Thanks. Yeah, I think the standards have moderated a little bit more in a more balanced way now. Um, because, you know, I've been in education a long time in the classroom. I mean, you went from, you know, very strict, you know, diagramming sentences to, oh, if you just write, it'll be just fine. Journal, 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 journal. And then, right. you know, there's all kinds of things in between. But I do think that the standards, you know, over time have moderated to, you know, right, well, practice. We, we had been teaching the craft of writing. Right, exactly. And then with the standard shift, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but it was more writing in response to reading. Yes. Is that? And then it seems like it's shifting back a little bit more to the craft of right. writing. It, to, it, or to balance. balance. A little balance. Right. So because they certainly have to respond to reading of course they in do, writing, yeah. but... Well, and, and the work we're doing through the standards work, you know, having the different kinds of writing, you know, making sure students know how to write a persuasive piece or write a, um, what are the other, it's the, there's the narrative opinion papers. So, you know, there's a, stru there's a structure to how you, how you do that. Um, so the days of just everybody gets their journal out in journals or sits down and writes a composition mm -hmm. on a topic, and that's all what writing includes, you know, it's, it's different now. There's just a lot of different, we're exposing kids to all kinds of different writing. Mm -hmm. well, what about the grammar at Pembroke? Um, well, I would say it was the, again, to Pam's point, several years ago, I don't think it was a focus, but I think it was three years ago, Julie DeRoche bought a grammar, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. grammar book, mm -hmm. and so we are using that um, in instruction. Well, but and I know the younger grades are doing foundations, foundations, yeah, which is more of a phonics, mm -hmm. and then the upper grades are doing words, words their, their way. way. Mm -hmm. and then, but they're also, and I, again, I'm not going to be able to remember the name, but there is a grammar book, um, except for in sixth grade, that mm -hmm. they are using. Okay. Great. <clears throat> trying to make sure they have the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. What about focus area three? Did anybody have any questions? I had a question on PBIS. I'm just going to be acronym okay. crazy. PBIS yeah. at MHS. Mm. What is the plan? Oh. Is is PBIS is the plan to bring PBIS over to the middle high school, or what's okay? <laughs> you might have a difference of opinion there. Not my plan. <laughs> <laughs> It's well, it is a yellow, yellow and establish so a training to introduce so PBIS you, at the middle high school. So Jack. Is what I read. So Jack, so <laughs> why don't you speak to that? And continuing to investigate for GMHS, did you see this? Yeah. Uh, Do you work with, have you worked at all with Chris on that? Is where? Well, it's more um, with Peter. Okay. You know, as far as coming to some type of agreement. Ah, uh, okay. So it's yellow because the discussion is occurring, but it's not yellow because no, anything's <laughs> moved forward with it. Okay, I guess. Then, then my question is the next step, establish a training to introduce PBIS at GMHS. Sounds sounds like it's happening, happening. not yes, it does. discussing. We haven't started the discussion yet. <laughs> However, considering... It's going to be a very short discussion? No, he's retired. No, I'm speaking. not going to be yeah, here. Oh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. I mean, so let's talk just for a minute about what would be, I, I guess, what's the need in terms of that at the middle high school. Is, is there a need at the middle school for PBIS, which is a very, you know, kind of a structured... Well, you would have to believe in that philosophy. Well, I don't know that you have to believe in the philosophy. You have to have a need and then see that this will fit, this will meet the need. I mean, I think we're in agreement that uh, there's certainly some cultural things and some behaviors that need to be addressed yeah. within the middle school. Right. Whether that's done through PBIS or some other program, I think is what we really need to discuss. Right. But it's the it's the notion that it's a po they're they're positive interventions, right? They're, so it's a, a way to try to motivate kids to do what you want them to do, right? But wouldn't you, so some of those though would. Uh, be beneficial to more younger kids. Yes. Um, I looked at PBIS more so in in uh, the Pembroke age kids. Mm -hmm. I didn't really look into it as to how it would how it has worked with the middle high school kids. Well, PBI, PBIS is really in in its whole. It's a tiered program for intervention. That that's really what it is. It's how to provide support so that all students have access to social, emotional, and behavioral well-being. So the, you know, the, our, our acknowledgement, that is an elementary model, but it's based on the tiered, um, right. the tiered model. That, so, that really so, is the PBIS. so if you think about it at the middle school, the way the programs are structured, right? So there's the, everybody's in the general curriculum, everybody's in the general classroom, but then for those students, who need more structure or more support, 
there is a model where you have social emotional teachers that doesn't mean the kids are in those self-contained programs but mm -hmm. they may be getting social thinking or they may be getting a period here or there or it's a place for them to be able to go and and get you know some support or help right so it, it, i think that's kind of the tiered approach right is that everybody it just doesn't go from everybody does what everybody else does and then or it's discipline right it's mm -hmm. there's a there's there's an understanding that there are some students who have more social emotional needs and so there needs to be other interventions other than just you know you go into the discipline track mm -hmm. without any help I've actually um, worked with PBIS for almost 20 years now and um, to me the, the most important component of it is setting the common language for staff right. and kids so that's what I think would be missing if we don't move something forward to middle high school where the students would be getting these expectations set across all environments of Pembroke. Staff's using common language to address those behaviors, and then when they get to the middle school, it's gonna be a completely different set of standards. That, that's where I think we could run into trouble at some point. So a continuity of... Yeah. Right, of the same. Language yeah. and so you know more important than the rewards and those kind yeah, of things. Yeah. It's for kids I can't imagine to know what their expectations <laughs> are across all environments. One of the things you'll notice at Pembroke when you walk up the stairwell, they have the expectations posted right. as to you know what what does respect look like right. on the stairwell and so on and so forth. So I think continuing with expectations similar to that when we get to the middle high school, whether it's done <coughs> a specific model of PBIS or not, I, I don't know how important that is, yeah. but I think the consistency of language is what yeah, I think is that's really going to make a difference for kids. So then, mm -hmm. so then when would that be discussed? Yeah, like introduced to. I mean, I can so see the yellow. Ask <coughs> would take a lot of time. I mean, there is only so much professional development time but that will be done and over well not you know it's I know it's an ongoing process but the the time put a, focused on it will be that Nias is coming in March so after March there should be some well we can't put everything on hold because Nias is here no. I mean no, what but happens with the children that leave Penbrook that go to the middle school you know right no it makes a lot of that sense language to me. type I, I, and I'm, Agreeing. So yeah. right. So I'm just asking. Yeah. So if that's if that's a recommendation of um, our special ed director, when would that then? I mean, I honestly I wouldn't expect that it's going to happen until after the yes. But yeah. two reasons. One would be. I, I would expect me ask is going to make some recommendations in that area, and we'll want to take a look at that. And then second to that, is, you know, um, you, you're right that professional development until they leave, until the ask leaves, is all based. Yes, right. So we haven't really completely created the professional development calendar for next year, right? But it certainly, if that becomes a strategic action plan, we're not going to talk about the action plans today because we're still working on those. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get everything tied up. But if it ends up being an action step for, for next year, right, then we have time to plan for it. I think I think their point is it, it it's got to be it's got to be a district initiative, right? So it's got to we got to put some some energy behind it. You can't just put it down on the list and say <laughs> we're going to do it. You got to right. you got to know that it, it involves plan. a lot. Because yes. I mean, thinking about PBIS, Margaret, in your school, I mean, you're implementing it this year, but you've been actually working on it. It's probably been about a year and a half. Yeah, the they've been mm -hmm. they did the planning on it and brought people in to talk about it and. They went to conferences on it, and so I think you know it may not just be training initially. It may involve more planning and discussion, mm -hmm. you know, and then then a plan a training year. Mm -hmm. So then under three A three, where it says in green, implement PBIS at the elementary school and continue to investigate for GMHS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Has there been investigation though into GMHS? Well, I think that Jack and. The investigation has been between Jack and Peter, it sounds like. I mean, but Jack, but I, I don't know if, if Principal Lucia supports it. Support, well, well that, actually, I, I know he, he, he just, said just said he didn't. So, <laughs> so I do know you don't. I don't know if I, 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 I don't know that much about it. Right. So, yeah. and what I know, I have a shallow understanding of it. Um, so I really, 
I can't say that I wouldn't support, I would definitely not support that in a high school, and I don't know that it's an, an appropriate program that goes that high, but I would have to look up, look at it about, you know, in the middle school and, you know, how, how is it different because there, there has to be um, a system of increased in accountability when you move up the ladder. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know that much about it to see, you know, what it is. So I definitely agree with you on that point. The, um, with the increased accountability. Yes. Yeah. 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 But at, at the high school level. Appropriately, that's exactly what it does by yeah. giving what the expectations are across all the different environments. You're setting up that accountability. You're expected to behave in this manner. Mm -hmm. within each area of the building. So the expectation levels theoretically would increase elementary to middle school. Yes. The and expectations yes, are higher. Well, and the staff would work together to develop what those expectations are. It would be That's age. the process that Pembroke's mm -hmm. been going through. Yeah, it's, it's not a program, so to speak. You know, it's a, it's a, set, of, it's a pr set of principles that you, and then you can determine what, how you want to implement them. Mm -hmm. like, like Margaret will tell you, not everybody is implementing PBIS that she's aware of in other schools, just like her. She, mm -hmm. she went and saw how others were doing it, but they made it their own mm -hmm. at Pembroke. It so it, it would be the, it's a framework. So it would be the same in, in the middle like high school. If you went to the middle school, sure. it would never, you would not want it to look exactly like it looked in the elementary school. Mm -hmm. But it's that common language. You know, right now, you know, maybe kids, you have a handbook, but the handbook maybe isn't operationalized for kids. You know what I mean? So I think it's, it's making the language more more um, <coughs> um, what is it more explicit mm -hmm. right that so it would be age grade and culture appropriate you'd have to right. work on making it right. that way so Jack have you seen this carried through high school uh, I have actually <clears throat> but um, when I worked on it um, in New Hampshire we actually had a federal grant program for the entire state where schools could have uh, and you got all the training for free. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty remarkable program. It was done wow. through New Hampshire CBIS, which is the Center for Behavioral Intervention and Supports. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we when I was uh, at Winnesquam Regional School District, we did implement it pre-K through 12 and had great success. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Jack will be key in yeah. the conversation. Yes, he will. <laughs> yes, he will. Sure. That's right. Yes. So should that really be read, I guess? Which one? Introduce the MHS to the oh. concepts of PBIS? 3A1. Oh, 3A1. Because yeah. 3A3 is investigating, which... Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm maybe not sure which one you're looking at. 3A1. 3A1. Yeah. The second year, the, oh. the small yellow one. So the small yellow one? It could be, you know. Yeah. It isn't introduced to the whole school. It's introduced to the whole school through the principal. Anything else do you want to talk about on this one? Uh, the red one that jumps out is the school van. Mm -hmm. Which I would argue that could actually be green because you investigated it. <laughs> yeah, it didn't happen, right? Mm. Yeah. Well, that's true. It, it, but I guess you did the know, work. We, we, we love to have. Yeah. I just don't see it as the top priority. As yeah, so you're right that we did investigate it. I mean, we've done been, we've been investigating that for a while. That's one of the things Jack and I talked about shortly after he yeah, came, yeah. Um, <clears throat> which was you know as a way to save money, right? You know, could we could we control some of our own transportation costs and potentially offer an option to other districts to transport? Um, you know, obviously the challenge with that is you you have to do the insurance, you have to get the drivers. You know, it's yes. it's Maybe not it's not as huge. not as easy as it would would seem to be. Nice, good job. <laughs> but you're right; we did investigate it. That's a good point. I don't know that we went as far as, you know, getting very deeply into the cost of the vehicles and insurance. I think we just said, you know, it's just exactly. prohibitive. Yeah. But I can make that green. Are, you, are we still on three? Are you still checking three out, or are you moving on to four? I'm going to three. Okay. 
Yeah. So and the other okay, did I in I'm sorry, the last the very last okay. page of yeah, three. Yeah, I know I see that. What is OBLD and SLD? In the two <laughs> red boxes. Language based, language based, based learning, learning disability. Language based learning. Speech. And speech. Speech. Um, speech Wait, language, language based dis learning disability. disability. Sorry, and speech language, language disability. disability. Okay. Specific learning. Oh, and that, that is definitely something that we, we talked about. We were hoping that we could get that, um, that done because a lot of times the teachers will have students in their classroom and it's really just a matter of just presenting the information in a slightly different way, knowing that you have children in the classroom that have those kind of disabilities. You know, it's not necessarily rocket science, right? But there are strategies that are very helpful when you know that there are certain needs in the classroom that you can accommodate for by maybe making something more visible or um, you know maybe explaining the directions in different ways or you know having more hands-on kind of opportunities there's you know there's a lot of things you can do well some of that can be done through co-teaching exactly so how does that happen like say at the at the high school level when you have a child that does have a specific learning disability and then they go into you know a, a um, college prep class mm -hmm. and what is that general ed teacher when and, and and how is that gen ed teacher explained how to accommodate this child with a specific learning disability well the the, the accommodations um, are, are pretty much standard most of them and uh, most of our teachers know how to do that, but if they don't, then they get help from the special educator. Right, because it, so there's many different specific learning disabilities, and some mm -hmm. are less common than others. So mm -hmm. say a child has a specific learning disability that isn't a common learning disability, and they go into their general ed class. So how much time is that general ed teacher given to recognize what needs to be done differently to teach mm -hmm. the class, but also keep that child with the specific learning disability engaged and understanding. Well, it's spelled out, and it's spe the accommodation is spelled out in the IEP, and then again, they consult with the special ed department, and if it was something that needed special training, they would get special training. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to before. give you an example, yeah. Um, this is more of a physical disability, so what we have teachers that have no experience with someone that's hearing impaired, and there's a, there's a system that we use, so there's some, some kids coming through that have that system, and we bring in um, an expert from uh, wherever we buy it from, and they would train the teacher on how to use it. So that would be uh, a not common accommodation and that's how we would do it and we, we could do the same thing for learning disabilities and things like that so so right so that company would come in and when is that done though like is not in PD because it's not gonna that yeah, it depends what well, sometimes we would get a sub for the teacher or, or do it right after know, school. If, they, if there was special training we do send the person to it but is this something and, and maybe I'm, is this something that they can learn in two hours after school or depends on it depends I mean, on clearly the I mean it, some of this seems like it's more technique and, and training not just a watch a webinar for, I, I don't mean to put it that way but like a how to use a device versus a right technique it, it depends it, right I, I guess that the, it's a hard question answer was not knowing the specifics so the, because there's there's um, specific accommodations and, and how to um, how to teachers accommodate that accommodation which I've explained how we do that and then there are tools for example we, we're just getting into Moby Max at the middle school right now and we're training the teachers how to use it and that tool helps uh, everybody but can it can be a major uh, learning tool for somebody that, uh, that to how to reach that accommodation that someone may have at one point mm -hmm. we brought in landmark and we trained teachers in landmark so teachers for example 
could, if, if I had a student in my class who was a language-based learning disability kid, I might be able to suggest they use two-column notes because that's a strategy that I might have been taught that would help students that are I know are going to struggle to just figure out well how do I how do I get these things down in my notes it's like no you know how to do it put mm -hmm. get your two mm -hmm. columns out you know put your notes in so yeah when we we some of those things we train the teachers that are going to be teaching those kids specifically and some of the things we we offer up to the general faculty so the things that Carol was explaining to you we use some faculty meetings and some PD days to train everybody in, in those languages. We can't do everything on PD days. So <coughs> we have to utilize time we have, like through c community gatherings, um, pet faculty meetings, uh, grabbing people you know quickly after school. Like Liz and, and Sandra, they have time designated after school to work with teachers who are interested in you know, technology. And Jack, what Jack, did you want to Jack add? is dying to say <laughs> something over here. Better be good. Well, <laughs> you know, obviously, we have to speak in general generalities around this. So um, one of the things that I think is really important to remember is that the special educators are very well versed in the specific learning styles of the student. Yeah. And uh, almost every IEP that we have within the district is consultation that's provided between the general educator and the special education teacher. So you know, at, if I'm the language arts teacher in the high school, first off, I want to make sure that I'm providing a very language rich classroom, which I know that they all are providing that for students that might have language based learning disabilities. And then they may be looking at, um, you know, for those students that are more auditory learners, they're going to make sure that they have some lecture component. For students that are more visual learners, they're going to make sure that they have things that are on the board and around in the classroom for them to be able to access the curriculum in a different way. So it's really based upon what the student's disabilities are. Kids that are kinesthetic learners are gonna do more project-based work, maybe some online programs, things like that. Right, well I know on, in, on in, uh, individual education plan you have accommodations, I get that, and obviously those accommodations have to be followed. But I think I was just going one step further into, in, in the plan is, does it specifically say this teacher is going to teach this child this way because this is this child's specific learning disability. So that's what I'm getting at is, is how, how is that, how do we know that that's being done? That well, that gen ed teacher is accommodating that specific learning disability when they have 18 kids without it and one with it. It starts with assuming good intent, right? <laughs> expectations of teachers we expect that they're going to follow through with those expectations we also have administration that's doing walkthroughs consistently throughout the classroom um, right but, but in order to the kids right but in order to follow through with expectations they have to know what those expectations are so that's what I'm getting at ah. how do they know what this specific learning disability child requires and then how do they it wouldn't be PD, I'm thinking, because it wouldn't take the whole right. staff. It right. would take no, just... That's why it's done more through the consultative model where, um, you know, we assess all students in order for them to become eligible for special ed. Those assessments provide us with a ton of information about student learning styles. So the entire team for that child is involved in the review of those assessment results. The special educator obviously is the one that has the most expertise in that area, and that's why that person is providing consultation to the general education teacher and saying these are the things that need to happen for this child to be successful within your classroom. And those consultations tend to happen on a weekly basis. Like a, during a, a prep time or like? What, sometimes in the hallways, sometimes, yeah, you know. Sometimes they make when time when before school. Both or free when they're both or free. Special ed teachers have more flexibility than regular ed teachers, so it's usually when the regular ed teacher is free, but sometimes before school, sometimes after school. Lunchtime. So I would hope, though, that what we're doing is if there is a child with a specific learning disability that the gen ed teacher and the special ed teacher sees that their grades are right. not right. That's what I was you they're watched. not as good as they have been in the past that they would work together to figure out, okay, right. 
I'm doing this, are you doing this, and, and try to figure out where ways, the disconnect is. There's consultation in technique, and there's consultation with content. So a lot of times, the special educator is going to the content teacher, asking content questions, uh, getting information on, on where the special, uh, the regular ed teacher feels uh, the student has a weakness in content and what to emphasize, and uh, it really goes both ways. So that's been going on for a long time. It, it's, I would say it's more than weekly. But I agree with you, Barbie. So you're watching what the children are doing, right? You're seeing what the results are, right? If, if kids are failing or doing very poorly, then that's going to trigger, you know, a discussion about, well, what, what do we have to do differently? <clears throat> what we're doing might not be the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. well, and I guess the point, too, is that the special educator has the expertise and they are sharing those strategies, techniques with right. the content teacher. Right. So and the content teachers really look for that. I mean, I remember I've sat in many meetings where the science teacher, I'm thinking about a science teacher at the middle school who was so excited to have the special educator. She said, I, you know, I know what I'm going to do tomorrow because she sat with me and, you know, she just really wasn't sure what was going to be the best thing for this child. So that whole collaboration, mm -hmm. you know, that's one thing I, I do think in the, in the district that I've seen over time is a lot more collaboration. Mm -hmm. Like not the shut your door you know I don't want anybody to know what I'm doing or I have to know it all you know there's definitely more collaboration even when I look at the mentor program and what Amanda does with instructional rounds for the year two teachers I mean the veteran teachers open their classrooms up and kid teachers come around with Amanda looking for specific things that they want to see you know so years ago nobody would have opened their classrooms up people you know so it you know I think that some of what you're talking about or worrying about is I think less of an issue now than it might have been years ago because you know there is a more collaborative spirit yeah I, I've definitely witnessed uh, them and you know them and us like right. they're the yeah. special ed yeah. teacher we're the gen ed teacher right. and there there wasn't that collaboration you know coming together it was more like mm -hmm. uh, this is me this is yeah you. and and almost like you know, don't tell me. Yeah, you know, exactly. How to do right. Things, so. Right. Well, I have a question then. Sure. So, in say a college prep level course, would there ever be a co-teaching model? Right now, we're not doing co-teaching. Oh, in the oh that's, at all. That's not to say we couldn't do it. it I guess I. But your level, said. but your level three classes are. Are, are not really college prep, but those are not co-taught, but there's more support in well, those. They're supported. They have supported, they have classes, supported classes. Really, I misunderstood. You don't <laughs> really I but supported <laughs> could be with a para. Could it be could a para, be. could be a teacher. Yeah. Right. So it definitely be. different from co-teaching. It depends. It, the level doesn't matter because we have some special, some kids on IEPs and honors classes. Right. So it, it's a matter of what the accommodation is. The support. Yeah. And, and when you see the results at the high school, because Colin's going to talk about those, you know, even when you look at the subgroups, the subgroups of kids at the high school do very well. Okay. I misunderstood. I thought yeah. somehow at the high school some of that was happening. But Co-teaching. Um, years ago, there was more of it. Remember when we, when we went to this model of more program based it we had to use the resources in a different way we just didn't have the luxury of doing co-taught classrooms and then all of the so so we did do it a little bit differently we, we actually had we had a, we have a couple co-taught classes in the middle school because the special educator is really uh, well trained and, and good at it um, and I, I, I think it's a good model, but it takes a lot of training. Mm -hmm. So you, ha you can't just say, okay, we're going to co-teach next year. Yeah. You have to train the special educators and the regular ed teachers on mm -hmm. how to do that. Okay, so we do have it. We, we, we have all classes. classes of it. Not really. No. Okay. <laughs> one, there's one special educator that does it in a math class. Yeah, <laughs> but it is something that we are talking about as a district. It's just a question of, it's a resource allocation mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Well, there's pros and cons to everything. Everything, that's yeah, right. So. so what about area four? 
kind of thing in area four that you are we going to get the wellness committee back up yeah and so running I, is Sean yeah. going to be the well um, well I had a conversation today with Colin and Sean and they've agreed to sort of help with that and organizing it because two of the major major areas of the well health and wellness um, mm -hmm. the, the plan our curriculum and the relationship to all of the programs that we're doing and foods mm -hmm. so Pam has agreed that she would be the clerk because yes. she takes amazing minutes and um, so we're we just had a conversation today about that our goal would be to try to get a I'm, I'm also reaching out to Mary Beth Doherty to see you know kind of because she's been <coughs> she's been a, a major sure. player and she wants to continue to be the other thing we talked about is that I think we all agree there's some gaps in some of the um, some of the roles that people can play on that committee like for example um, we'd like to see um, more, um, a counselor or health and health and PE teachers um, right now they're not represented on the wellness committee so there's a, f a few things that we we want to expand it a little bit and plan our planning our plan would be to meet once before Christmas holiday and then you know maybe three times after and they'd come back you know at some point during the year and do a presentation for you on you know kind of the, as we talked about today the goal to me isn't to have a, a committee sort of a standalone committee so we've got the the work we're doing with Georgetown cares which is merging the substance abuse advisory panel right yes that's right and so the connection would be that's the community coalition and then the health and wellness is one piece so if there's things that we want to do in the health and wellness committee we don't usually have money we might have money if we work with the coalition so the goal is to create a stronger partnership around this whole issue of health and wellness and Colin is as I said you saw earlier in the plan he's getting that he's trying to get that health and uh, that um, vertical team up so that would be another you know sort of connecting piece so that is the plan very well said I had a question on 4A4 mm -hmm. which um, I guess with the previous I, I hear good things mm -hmm. but I think one of one of the challenges with the previous food services director was getting the feedback listen listening to the customer figuring out what they liked and didn't like and and yes evolving the system and the red yellows and reds mm -hmm. are the things that we all indicated were really important we did for making it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. progress as a department mm -hmm. um, and that could be the work of a of the health and wellness well it sounds well, I mean, well, I guess part of this is like conduct a satisfaction survey for parents, staff, and students. Mm -hmm. That's not it health and wellness. That's well, no, this was all in relationship to uh, the meals program. So Heather was Heather was going to um, have a more formal program of gathering feedback from the customers, right? right? Um, so she did. Remember, she came when she came and talked to you. She did say that she met, you know, with the with the students not on a formal basis she didn't have like a yeah. like Sean and I chatted um, about talking about his goals and um, he was talking about actually uh, doing something where he'd have kids you know say throw their name in a hat say that they'd be interested and then he 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 pull names from the hat and have lunch with them right. and, and talk with them so because the goal would be to, instead of just having like a standard group like a student council you know get a chance to talk to, to multiple kids but, she, but she did not have a formal yeah. process right mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm I am uh, and I know we're three months in or whatever it's been yeah. and, and there's a lot going yeah. on I'd like to see that I don't want that to get pushed to the side no I, I just, Sean's not here but right. um, but he is Sean is in the cafeterias all the time mm -hmm. Peter can you and Margaret speak to that I mean and, well and I guess I'm, he's I'm checking I'm, in with the customers I'm gonna push back a little bit because again the previous food services director I'm in there all the time I talk to kids I know what she they wasn't. want just telling you respectfully but that's what we were told I know and then the result was a very big disconnect between mm -hmm. yep. what we were told and what we and what we actually right. saw and I just yep. I just want to make sure, make sure, sure that happen. that doesn't yep. happen again. Yeah, I would say to you that I would say to you that Sean is very focused on that. And um, in fact, when we talked uh, about a week and a half ago, um, we talked about exactly that. So you know, what data 
are you collecting and mm -hmm. do you have you know do you have information I mean he's obviously talking to the kids and they're making adjustments mm -hmm. he knows that the paninis he's, he's tracking the meets with Suzanne he's tracking the you know the uh, people who are participating in the spending right. and what, all that what, kind of stuff yeah right. what is selling and what is selling like and what mm -hmm. isn't Absolutely. but um, in terms of talking to the customers I definitely he okay. that is a plan for him, but I will make sure that okay. when we have him come, he'll have some data to share with and the you. Well, the paninis are hot. The paninis are hot. I guess. Flying. Are you asking shelf, hot like yes. warm or hot no, like popular? Popular. 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 Well, today well, I actually both. saw at Pembroke Sue in the yeah. cafeteria had a group of sixth graders, yeah. and she was meeting with them yeah. about. I was heading to the school wide yeah. meeting, yeah. community gathering. So. That was happening on a oh. Pembroke basis. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So I agree, Michael. It okay. needs to be mm -hmm. formal because then you can use, as we're always talking about, you use the data to then inform what you what you mean next. Well, it's been a couple of years that we were asking her to um, talk to the kids. Yeah. yeah, and I think she felt that she was talking to the kids, but it wasn't in any kind of real formal. Like, if she talked to the kids, I don't know what data came out of it. I guess that's what... And it doesn't need to be a formal yeah. sit down, pick five kids no. out of a hat, no. but it's, I'm going to talk to ten kids a day and find out what yeah. they like right. and actually and write it down. down and write it down. I think he does it. go through the cap and he yeah. does talk but to the kids. Suzanne okay. works with him. So yeah. It's more informal, but, you know, I don't know if he's going back and writing it down. Yeah. But it's a matter of compiling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are we... He's, you know, he's new, so he's building relationships. Right. No, you know. for sure. And we're three months in, and I'm, I'm not... No, no. Um, not really related to this, but I would love to see participation. Yes, like actual, yeah, we'll real. definitely but get that. But that won't be next week. So, okay. We'll have yeah. to. Thank participation you. by... I'm sorry. In terms of food services. Lunch, food service, lunches. Budget, like participation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it going like, is it, is it Oh, working? participation yep. with, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when are we due to hear from Sean again? We haven't got that on the yeah, calendar yet. we'll have yet, to do we'll, that. We have that as our list of things to get on. <coughs> um, we'll do this. Yeah, because I think he would be interested in coming before yeah, you and talking sure. about where, you know, where things are. Early on, because we did talk about we have to decide if we're going to, we got to start. We decide, like, next month. Yeah. <laughs> No pressure. No pressure. Um, and the other thing was just the youth risk behavior survey, but we, you know, we have a plan for that. So. And then five is technology, technology and information management. I remember when this was all red. Mm -hmm. Yes, from all in there. Uh, the one to one. So how is that going? How are we how are we thinking that it's well. Peter before, <laughs> Peter, before you, <laughs> before, you, before you leave, they just asked about how do you feel the one-to-one -one is working my son. so far? Very well. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any specific points uh, that you might want to accentuate? I think we, it's great that everybody has it, and, and not everybody, the kids that do have it. Um, the people that opted out, uh, system of we have enough iPads they get them timely fashion every day all of that's working well um, I'm seeing some really cool things in classes um, uh, and I expect that to really spread as uh, we get uh, more used to it and uh, we have we have two integration specialists starting this week that's so right that's, that's back. helping out mm -hmm. Um, the only uh, little uh, bump, I think, is with our network uh, right now, our wireless network, because um, it has to be tweaked because the, the um, I think we may have gone a little bit overboard with the wireless AP. So um, <laughs> if you're in a room and you hook your, your uh, device hooks up to the AP there, uh, the signal so strong you you walk into like five rooms down and you're still connected to that one and it's really slow and you don't get on so so Ben's working with that and trying to kind of turn them down right to uh, a point where when you walk out of the room you'll drop it but then when you get into some common areas you you have issues so um, but we haven't had any problem with kids getting on or and no that, that's about the only problem so um i i think that we uh 
did everyone did a great job planning this and learning from other districts and uh, that we benefit from that and so we've had we've had very few bumps so okay. it's, it's gone pretty well and just to, as you guys know that um, parents wanted to pay for that uh, up front so we when we were started to talk about this we worried about you know what if we don't have a, the money to pay the lease program mm -hmm. and and that really wasn't a concern because almost almost everybody paid in one payment and the ones that didn't paid in two pretty much but we do have to we were talking about this we do have to start thinking about you know <coughs> year, giving people enough time in advance right. to you know know what's coming yeah. and um, I guess what, what we didn't anticipate was were the kids that that were here last year we didn't think about the the choice kids and the kids moving right. into the district <coughs> and how we could take care of them mm -hmm. so uh, that's something that we should right because we had already ordered right yeah right. yeah, yeah. We didn't want to over order because then we're stuck with the bill for iPads that are not right. Right. And, and there was a deadline where they had to get onto the lease program right. too. They couldn't just hop on <coughs> later on. Right. Yes. What is our and I know we I know we talked about this during the during the planning part, but I don't quite know what the what the, the answer was. What are we doing to assess the 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 program as a whole in terms of and I don't want to say it's another data point, but you know, how are we measuring that it's that it's good and that it's accomplishing what we're doing instead of hey, kids are using iPads, great. There's a there's a value to that, but actually furthering does it's it not just does it increase learning? And how are we yeah how are we measuring the how are we measuring that? I'll just leave it open. Well, we're not yet, but we there's some tools out there that we we're, we're going to look at, and um, that's something that. That's a question that everyone in the world is wrestling with. Right. So I think we have to identify what what those goals are, and then how will you know, right? I mean, correct. Yeah. I'm. I'm. And, and I guess that's kind of where I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, lead, I'm. I'm. I'm leading you down a path of when. When are we going to start figuring out our flavor? And yeah. so we've got some of those kind of learning expectation goals and what we know that a one-to-one -one program can do and we would like it to do with our with our students with our teachers um, and we will certainly develop some tools to try to assess that it is kind of a it's difficult because it's not a you sit down and take your one-to-one -one test and then you get your data right, um, right it's a little harder but what we can do is now that we have both integration specialists you know I'm planning on meeting with them and keeping logs of who they're meeting who with, they're meeting with what their what topics are coming up most frequently what they are you know pushing out and what they're kind of instructing for teachers that want to know more and then we can look at those logs and see what the production of some of the student work is mm -hmm. um, to see whether or not that's lining up with our stated goals I guess how do we measure the again is it, is it improving student learning the and I'm gonna I'm gonna pick social studies not for any reason but you know what it's not it's not adding enough value. Yes, they're using the device in social studies, but it's not adding enough value. So maybe it's you know de-emphasize. It's available in social studies, but you know what? It's really not a big focus, and we're not pushing those teachers to use it, or we're killing it in math. How do we grow it on the math side? Because it's not going to work perfectly in every setting, in every classroom, in every lesson, in every unit. Right. How do we identify, we and we don't want it to, for sure, yeah. but how are we, I, 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 it's wonderful that the teachers can reach out to, to the um, integration specialists, but I guess my question is, now that we're starting to see that in reality, how are we then taking that and then building a better program? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if you could do anything. You couldn't track student grades and say the grades are better because the kids are on technology. No. You know, you could assess the kids perceptions of how it's changed their you know their experience I guess I, I think what's very obvious is the level of it, student engagement all all student engagement and what I mean by that is when I go into a class rather than just seeing you know 70% of the kids really paying attention and notes. dissipating you, there's a lot more active learning where all of the kids in the room are engaged in the lesson so there's so many different ways to look at it, mm -hmm. but we also can't lose uh, sight of the fact that it fills a technology <coughs> void for us. 
because we have mandated testing that we uh, we would never be able to do that mm -hmm. if you know we if were was talking about that at budget time and we need 640 computers for, three days. for the middle high school right no agreed so it, it it's more it's more than learning I guess it's it's there's also this you know technology void that we've had that it's mm -hmm. that's filled it's there's a lot of benefits I mm -hmm. think and we have to look at all of them so I think we have to decide what are we trying to measure Right. right, because not oh, yeah. everything needs to be measured, right? The, right. The, ki the, the kids need to have exposure in the 21st century to being able to use technology as a tool for learning mm -hmm. and working, right? But what specifically are we trying to find out, right? What do we want to look at? And I think student engagement is one thing, definitely, that you, you, can, you can assess that. And I think the perception of students as to you know, and, and even teachers, how has this changed your teaching? You know, but sometimes it's hard to be as quantitative as it is to be more qualitative mm -hmm. in terms of how you can assess this, assess that. It's not really about assessing satisfaction. Yes, no. That's I mean, there is really a level of that since we are yeah. telling people to go buy a, a, a device. They need to yeah. be satisfied with it. But no, I, I, you know what I, mean? I agree. I just fear the anecdotal, I walked into this classroom and it was great. Mm -hmm. As a measure of success. In a, you know, in, in a school of 700 kids. and But I guess I look at it, you know, I, I certainly think we should be measuring some things. But I also think that, you know, there, we, teachers use all kinds of techniques in their classroom. We don't assess, you know, the effectiveness of an individual technique that a teacher's using in any given day. But, you know, so what makes technology different? To me, it's like that's a tool. For it's sure, a tool. but it's a tool with a big cost. And we well, need to, well, but we need to make sure that three years from now, yeah, when we're looking at, at spending all the money on the network and, and yeah. on all these yeah. programs, that it's worth yeah. continuing. Yeah. Because there is a significant investment behind yeah. this. Yeah. Well, and I think what Colin said too about the logs yeah. of the integration specialist meeting with teachers, mm. troubleshooting questions. And what kind of things mm -hmm. are they like doing? I think that is valuable as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and that yeah. is yeah. going to be a number. Right. Well, but well, that it's, helps it's being you. able to look at those logs and say, you know, in year one, it was we were looking for level one skills, right. but year two or three, we're looking at level three skill, you know, whatever mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And there, are, and there are, you know, continuums of tech yeah. integration where yeah. certainly, you know, the first is just substituting what you would do on a paper pencil you're now doing right. and exactly. you know, you're taking app. That's kind of the baseline substitution. Right. As you get more it's proficient, safer. Then, right. Yeah, exactly. Then you would want to see yeah. some really revolutionary types of things that you wouldn't be able to do had you not had that tech in your hand. And that's what we can certainly monitor as best we can. It uh, won't be quantitative because that's almost impossible to do, right. but certainly we, we can look at it on that scale to know where we are within that kind of ladder or, you know, mm -hmm. matrix. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <coughs> Thank you. And the red for the CAD for the lab for GMHS, that was really a financial situation, right? So we, we had had the, in our lease, we thought that we were going to be able to do that. But then we replaced the teacher, basically the teacher laptops or uh, iPads instead. Yeah. So that still so that remains, that remain still on remains, our wish list. That still remains a goal, yeah. And then in terms of Tom Munis, yeah. how. how What's the cost of getting them to get the other units? Is okay. it a so we met with have. Mike Farrell mm -hmm. the other day. Because we've been talking about this for uh, I know. Yes. I told Mike, Forever. I said, I cannot make that red another year. Okay. So we have to either decide we're doing it or not doing it. Mm -hmm. Because if it was just up to us, we could do it. Right. But we work with the town, and the town owns the licenses. So um, there's sort of two things that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. One is the... Um, budget module which we use which we use mm -hmm. and there's elements of that module that we can use mm -hmm. we, we have the rights to use it so we're purchasing. purchasing so we're talking about that's a goal for you know it's a future goal which is to say okay you know we have to train people in it but how are people so rather than have people be doing li literally handwritten POs yes. We are going to get rid of that. It, it's going to be seamless. We just have seamless. to decide how we're going to get the, the schools to do it, 
to get it up to the central office. But, but theoretically, it should be automatic. A teacher submits a PO. Yeah, but you can't have every single teacher on Munich. You know, that's oh, the yeah. problem. No, so sure. that's the thing. Or like so the you, department, whatever it is. So but yes, it should be that's part of that's part of what we're well, that's part of the department discussion. goes to the principal, gets the signature, goes to you, gets exactly. the signature. Exactly. Exactly. Right. It's, we just need to decide how we're going to it's a, get it's it a management to, issue, to right. the principal. Okay. The other is the payroll, right? right? Which we've been trying to get yes. to for quite a while. So Mike is going to on his end Anderson. talk with his no, no Mike no, 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 Farrell talk to his people. Yep. And then we already have our talk to our people, okay. and people um, have to talk to our people. <laughs> we just need so to get we just training. Need to get, I mean, we so we, we need to well first we have to agree we're going to do it, and then we, we have to figure it. out what we need to do need in to terms do of training. We absolutely need to do it. Absolutely like I gave Mike some examples. I said, you know, if I wanted to, you know, Three ask a question about Suzanne's attendance for the last three years, right. you got to go to a book. She thing. shouldn't go to. Th I shouldn't have to go to three binders. And, and count up days. I should be able to push a button and it, sh it shows it. Okay. So, um, and, and it's just, you know, when you think about how many hours, I mean, if, when Trisha ever leaves or retires, I, I, pay, I, I, I dread the day because she has so many spreadsheets and so many systems that, you know, she can tell you in a minute exactly where it is, but it's not, a, it's efficient for her, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's so silly when you have a module if it's possible, if we're it's, not using it. it well, or, or the we don't town's have using to it, it, but we have yeah. no access to it. Yeah. So right. I don't think it's as much a big expense for the town in terms of a lot more licenses. We just need training. We just need to. Okay. She needs formal training. Yeah, and we need to be able to identify the roles and responsibilities. Right. So I hope so that's are we, not. So are we, are we, we, are we moving we, down that path? We yeah. are, but I mean, we're waiting. We would like to, but we were waiting for uh, town. Okay. Mike is. He's Mike work, is working on that with on his, his end. Yeah. He has to, I mean. Is that the select? No, no, uh, no, it's no. Just Mike is, it, Mike's the town administrator. Yeah, the staff works staff, for him. Right, it's his staff. So he's, he, so it's like, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, is it the value. treasurer, like who? No, it's the payroll person. There's a payroll. There's a payroll. Department. Okay. Person the pay, the right, okay. payroll department. I'm sorry. Okay. So there's accounting, there's payroll, right. and then there's the treasurer. Right. Yeah. So, so okay. we, we we would be talking about the payroll. Yes. Okay. So we, I just want to bring Munis into our payroll office, correct? So right. that she That's can all. just process it there and then send it up to the town, correct? As opposed to her doing it on all fifty-seven spreadsheets right. and then right. sending to the town, yeah. and then she has to take them. And then we'd and have access them them to yes. all of it in a moment. Agreed. So, so it just needs and to it, be. And you know, it, again, it there's. You know, it's, it's there's priorities, it's the right? It, and you it's, know? it's just the way they've done it, and that's why I said to Mike, "Well, what mm -hmm. stops us from doing it?" And he said, "Well, you know, it's like the way it's always been done." I said, mm -hmm. "Okay, right. well, I think we need to make the case mm -hmm. that there's a more efficient way. Yeah, you know, it's a more efficient way. So that but it's hard to change when you're used to doing things. <coughs> right. You know, when you've been in a job and doing it for a long. Yeah, time. I mean, I think the current lady we talked about was she's has been, been there like, almost 20 years, yeah. and Trisha's been here 20. Like, Six, I want to say. Not all in payroll, yeah. payroll but, you know, wow. I mean, people have done the work the way they've done it for a long time. Mm. So I, I think they'll, this will move now. You know, timing is everything. Sometimes, you know, it's a good idea. It just doesn't happen mm -hmm. for lots of reasons. But I think everybody's understanding that this is something now that makes much more sense. Now that they've got the chart of accounts done, right. you know, there's a number of things that have changed for the better. Okay, so does Mike Farrell have a timeline that he shared? Uh, he oh. said he was going to chat, talk, chat with, with, with her us. and get back to us. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and we'll give him so what we'll we'll we consider follow. our reasonable <laughs> amount of time, and then we will follow up with him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Speak up. You know what? It's. I mean, it's not really having the effect that we thought it might. I mean, I Michael sees them too. I mean, I, I think maybe if we've gotten a dozen, if they, even that's a generous, you know. Yeah. So it's a good thing to have, but I don't know that we would invest a lot of energy Correct. in putting it at the schools. You know, we're not hearing from people that they can't, whatever the system is at the school isn't working for them. I mean, people still, for me, use the email system, and I'm pretty diligent about getting back to people. So I don't, I don't think that, um, and, and as are all the administrators, you know, because I usually get copied on a lot of that stuff. So I, I think it's. Well, I think we're seeing a usage rate similar to whatever the district was that we spoke yeah, yeah. with, five or six a year. You're right. We're getting the five or six a year, and we're doing it 
for free for instead free. of for yeah. exactly. $10,000 or whatever exactly. that program was. So. Exactly. And, you know, I think the anonymous feature was, you know, sort of one of the things that we thought would be a draw, but most people don't do it anonymously. Right. I mean, I think maybe of the, couple, I'd say we yeah. couple. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then now fine. with Twitter, I mean, you, you I'm, deserve I'm, a green. Well, I'm, I'm, lear you I'm learning you're about doing Twitter. Amazing. I'm amazing. I'm learning about Twitter. Peter tweet. Peter has Twitter. Peter tweets. And, um. Ryan Sports. Browner has just learned how to, you know, not learned, but Ryan has been given the green light to tweet. I mean, so, it's not easy to come up with what to say and be consistent and have a theme, yeah. and, you know? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, but that's so what it, very, it very needs very to be job. consistent. Like, yeah. yeah, with the sports, like if you're going to, you know, if you're going to say the soccer team, you have to yeah. do yeah. All, yeah. Of all of them. You know, yeah. right. you really have no, to. No, I know, it's hard. It's yeah, hard. It's and, hard. and yeah. it has to be in a timely yeah. To be effective because oh, that's what you want to do. Like, like right now, I'd want to know how the football team did. Yeah. So right. go yeah. to Twitter so and see. see yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I do know what you mean. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's a great thing about Twitter. Yeah. It's going up to 280 characters. I you know. Can say, well, oh, I'm it is. That yeah. I'm happy about right? that. I have trouble yeah, sometimes. Like just getting to the yeah. zero. <laughs> I get to zero. I'm like yes. <laughs> but I want an explanation point. How can that be? So then I go in and I take the and and I make the little and sign. I get my characters. Like Twitter. Yeah. Um. So, how about um, six? I would love to see, similar to the food services, and this isn't really related to that, but again, like how much facility use fees we're getting, how much we're okay. using the turf field, like all these revenue streams yeah. are more than just a red, yellow, or a green. <laughs> <coughs> Supporting stuff behind it. Remember the town hired a, a budget analyst? They did. <laughs> Mr. Pinter, um, see, right? No, no. Oh. That was, he, he came oh. in to do well, a, gave um, him a, a, right. it was a smart gentleman maker. that came in and gave us the booklet. And have yes. we very nice mm. have we what heard more about that? Has that moved forward? That that project? It's done. That idea. It's yeah. done. Yeah, that was yeah, what they and hired what do you mean? It well, I think the town. I think finished. the town. I think the right now the received. town is trying to mm -hmm. yes to, to, to look at it in their in their budget uh, discussions. Um, I'm not sure exactly. So we haven't moved it forward. We haven't taken the suggestions. Well, I, I think there was some. The only thing I'd say that was like I'd say move forward a little bit was the way they were talking about the CIP. So a number of those things that were in that 10-year projection plan, I see are on the CIP list mm -hmm. over multiple years. So right. I did see a little bit of a connection there. But in terms of like the thinking forward about, okay, so what's the budget in town going to need to look like, you know, five years out, 10 years out, and how is the town going to figure out what revenue streams they're going to have so that they can continue to move? I don't know that that level of discussion has, has occurred, but perhaps it has. And until it does, this this red on our plan has to stay red. I, well, where are you coming from? So the last page? Or? The, use, use the, the forecast, forecast for, for the budget, budget analyst, analyst to plan long-term budgets. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, so it's really kind of out of our control right now. I mean, I right think now, what we're trying to do as hands. a school committee, I think what you guys are trying to do as a school committee is have, um, you know, three, you're trying to plan out multiple years of budget, you know, like three years. And you know, we were talking about going to, again to the to the town and saying, okay, you know, sort of, where are we with our three-year projection? You know, remember we did that once before, and it sort of looked dire three mm -hmm. years out. Every they should be having every town department do that, so they have a picture of, you know, what what it might look like, and and you know, what is what is the budget pi picture long term? So yeah, we're dependent a little bit on, you know. Mm -hmm. how the town interprets that, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they're the ones that tell us how much money we're going to get. Right, right. And it's a matter of matching our priorities with, or fitting our priorities within town-wide town priorities. Like, right. And, and I guess that, who was the late, who, who was it that they said was going to be the Matt liaison? Newhall. Yeah, Matt Newhall. Was gonna, is going to be the liaison to the oh, okay. school it's committee from FinCom. Yeah. From FinCom. Oh, great. And the chair is still um, It's still Ed. Ed, Ed yeah. In terms of, was there anything in seven that you wanted to talk about? 
we have some pretty we have some goals in seven you know for this coming year because we you know we have uh, principal search we have um, you know we have the NEASC you know work that we're doing I think observationally it seems like uh, we're putting a lot of we can't do this PD because of NIAS. We can't do this because, like, I know NIAS is a lot, but it seems like we're we're putting a lot of things. I don't want to say in the back burner, but we're saying we'll get to it after NIAS. And I just want to be plan. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think the only thing know? that only I think the only impact I that mean, NIAS has had on this district has been that it's used PD done. It, there hasn't well, and, been and any. Well, you know, yeah, it but, and maybe that but there process. are there I mean, are there is self -study. value in in it. I mean, it's a reflective of what are we doing, how can we improve, how do we want to move forward. So you know that time. I mean, you say it's it's NIAS. They're not just filling out well, you, forms. You have to spend it's, you have <laughs> to spend the year before. I mean, it's just right. if, unless we decided we were not going to engage in the NIAS process. There are certain things you there's certain things about that process that you have to do. Right. It's a it's, it's a pretty time. labor it's intensive process, but it's also supposed to be beneficial. It is. For I mean, I think it district. is. I think it is. I think that yeah. I think the, I mean, the school the something. school will tell you that you know they have it they have it's introspective. They have to right. take a look at you know what is their evidence. Speaking of measurements, what is your evidence for mm -hmm. the fact that you're you know meeting the standards for instruction, or mm -hmm. you know what is the evidence that your curriculum this Atlas program is going to save our life because mm -hmm. it's. You know, it's a, a, a system where, you know, in real time people are looking at their at their curriculum. So, but it is it is a very time consuming, you know, project project for basically a year and a half at least. Well and I think too it's hard because there's never enough time for professional no, there's enough never professional no, development. No, no, there isn't. Um, yes, I agree with that, Cheryl. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So Colin's you. next, I think. Great. This should be smoother this time, Colin. We'll get it right on and on. There you go. You came prepared. Oh, in your own. That's right. Yeah. Facility. <laughs> I in the car before I, when I left the office. The See? safest way to do it. <laughs> All right. So, good evening, everyone. Um, so, I'd like to take you through last year's MCAS results. Um, but as I'm sure you know, and anyone who's watching knows, uh, that last year was very different MCAS for for everyone in in Massachusetts. So, um, the first thing that I'd like to do and, and spend uh, as much time as we need to on it is just explaining kind of what. MCAS was last year um, and how that changed from years past and how that affects some of the data that we have available and how it's different and how it's new. Um, so first I'd just like to talk a little bit about MCAS last year and, and how did it change? What, what were the differences? And um, it is now called the Next Generation MCAS or Next Gen MCAS. Um, and uh, it was administered for the first time last year for uh, the ELA and the math assessments for grades three through eight. Um, in years past, there had been waivers that schools could apply for to either do the what's now called the Legacy MCAS, the old one, um, or the West Park, Gen. yeah, or the okay. Park <laughs> Test, or the Park Test. Um, and Georgetown in the past had, had stuck with the Legacy MCAS. Last year, there was no decisions or waivers to be made. It was everyone was taking this next generation MCAS. Uh, which consists of, consisted of s three things. Some legacy MCAS questions, so questions that we all know and love. Um, <laughs> new MCAS questions that were developed by teams of educators and teachers around the state um, that still followed a similar MCAS module, uh, model. And um, some park questions that were taken from um, those, those few years of piloted park tests. So it was kind of a, a mishmash of I think everything the, everything the best of both worlds if that's how you see it um, but they took they took a little bit of everything to make this new MCAS um, and what that did was it changed not only um, the questions that our students were, were asked but also the types of questions so there were now new ways to answer questions that were not just your standard multiple choice 
or your long comp, um, for instance, in some grades, there were multiple select questions where there was more than one correct answer that you had to choose from a menu or uh, a math question where the answer wasn't there to bubble in. You had to write your answer and explain how you got that answer. Um, so that was different for everyone. The other thing that was different uh, last year was this is the first year that the computer-based testing model was offered. Um, it was mandated for grades four and eight, which is what we took uh, last year. So our kiddos uh, with our iPads that were gracefully shared between the two buildings uh, in grades four and eight took the computer-based model. And um, with that assessment, there became even more differences in how the test was administered. Um, now students were typing their responses instead of writing them longhand. Um, there were some different accommodations and different um, ways that students could access the assessment based on the computer-based model. Um, so those were the big changes to the MCAS the last year. Any questions about that? There were some things that remained the same uh, last year that, that it, it makes sense to, to mention. First off, the high school did not change. Um, our 10th graders, our sophomores, took the, the legacy MCAS that has not changed in any of the subject areas for math, ELA, or science. Um, it was same old, same old as far as our high school students. Uh, that was also true for the science assessment um, for fifth and eighth grade, and also for 10th grade. Um, the science test did not change. They were still using the, the old standards, even though a new uh, framework had been published previously that year. But um, until 2019, so next year, uh, is when the science test will change um, for our students. And lastly, uh, while the test changed, there was still paper and pencil MCAS. So not all of our students were you know, using iPads with the, with the new technology. Um, there's an ongoing rollout of the computer-based testing. So last year we did fourth and eighth. This year we will be doing MCAS uh, on the computers for fourth through eighth. So four, five, six, and seven uh, and eight will take the computer-based uh, test this year. Uh, it went really smoothly last year as far as the rollout. Um, it's a lot easier to organize and manage and just keep track of what's going on. It was, I, I had done it um, in a previous district because they used the, the park software, so I was very familiar with it. And uh, it is pretty nice to, it was good for our time management because we could see, okay, this, we have five students who have five questions left. So, you know, the rest of our students can go on with their day. We'll take those five. We'll make sure that they have a nice testing uh, facility to, to finish that test up, but we can now get on with instruction for the rest of the day. So it was nice to, um, to, man to organize, to manage. It's easy to set small testing groups. So if we have students with accommodations that need specific testing areas, it's really nice to set that up. So it went really well last year, so we're expanding it uh, beyond what is mandated by the state. We're, we're adding on a few more grades this year, so that was nice. Okay, so um, this year... Grades three and ten will still do paper. -based. Correct. Three and ten will be uh, paper based. Next year, 2019, is the big kind of everybody's on board year. So computer based testing for everyone and next gen MCAS tests for everyone. 2019. That may or may not change in the high school because I think there is an accountability measure in the high school for students. So they're still weighing options on if 2019 will be that that new test for the high school or if it'll be 2020. Yeah, they're talking about the class of 2021 and 2022 having there be, uh, they're talking about it being a fairness uh, <coughs> adjustment because they're they're worried about, you know, what happens in 2021 and 2022 if, you, if all of a sudden the standards are that much higher and then kids can't hit the target right. in that, um, in that window of time. So I think they're, they're mindful of that. So they're, I think it's really going to be the the expectation of the real ratcheted up standards are going to be for the class of 2023, where it's going to be a higher a real higher standard. Yeah. So those were kind of the nuts and bolts changes. Um, with those changes, there are a lot of things that that means for for the school district and for Georgetown. Um, because with the next generation MCAS, they didn't just change the test to change the test. Um, there are new frameworks and new standards for ELA math and science now um, and the expectations w were raised for what students are expected to do with those new standards so they need an assessment that followed 
uh, those new expectations. Um, so there were a lot of changes um, and what that means to Georgetown. The first is the accountability ratings for schools. Uh, because it was a brand new test, um, schools that had a 90% or higher attendance rate of just sitting and taking the assessment. Doesn't matter how you scored, doesn't matter what you did, doesn't matter if you just <laughs> sit down and take the test. Click and submit. If you <laughs> kids in their seats. Yeah, if you had a 90%, I mean not, not of course our students they try their best. They they yes. Not, yes. Um, but as long as you met that 90% threshold, those schools were not given an accountability rating as we have known them, that one through five rating for schools. Um, so because of that, um, our elementary so Pembroke and the middle school has a no level rating if you go to the school profiles for 2017 you're used to seeing you know that that one that two right there um, it says no level and the only data that you have available is that uh, attendance percentage you'll see that we had 98 percent of our students took that so that's why we have no level um, which I, I understand why the state did because it's a benchmark year and we'll talk more about that but we don't want to hold anyone accountable to something that um, is, is brand new to everybody. It's a little frustrating because it makes our job a little harder to piece out mm -hmm. what, how, how we can interpret those results. But it was definitely an attempt to basically say to people, if you choose to opt out, which was the threat with PARC, right. is people were going to say they weren't going to take it. Then you immediately became a level three. Immediately. Yeah. Oh, right. If you were below you, that 90%. You were below 90, you're immediately at level three. And if you were a level four or five, they didn't move you. Right. So a lot right. of schools that are very are very frustrated by that, too. They decided you're, you didn't lose your level. So coming out, coming out of the other side of this no-level year mm -hmm. is, with Pembroke having been a three last year, last year, yep. last year, um, I get... It's confusing because this test was done. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so the year before. So the year before. Is there, does any of that sort of, is the expectation that any of that will carry over or is everyone sort of starting fresh, fresh. once this fresh. has a little data behind it? Thank you for the second. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> this is the You're baseline. welcome. So this, this, so 2017 is the new baseline year. It's the new benchmark year. So because it was a brand new assessment, there are no apples to apples comparisons. So any of the data or any of the reasons that we were a level three school don't hold water anymore. Okay. Um, 2017 will be the year in which they, they make our goals for the next six years um, based on last year's data. Okay. Um, so we're kind of, it's, it's kind of blank it's slate, nice. tabula rasa for everybody. We're all starting fresh. Here's, here's where we're at. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't pull some of that data for that for those subgroups or for the, for the specific students um, but it only is from the new assessment we can't really draw comparisons to this group of students did this was perform this assessment. way in 2016 and they performed this way in 2017 because it's a different assessment right okay um, the other thing that changed for Georgetown and for everyone is uh, the difference in achievement level names so before we had advanced proficient needs improvement and warning um, now they are all about the expectations. So whether students are exceeding those expectations, meeting the expectations, partially meeting, or not meeting the expectations. And the expectation there, and this is important, is performing uh, adequately at the next so at the next year's grade level. So if I'm a fourth grader taking my fourth grade MCAS, meeting expectations means that I will I'm ready more uh, that I am ready to perform fifth grade level work because they take the assessment in the spring, so they want the expectation to be students to be prepared for the following grade level. That make sense to everybody? Yep. Okay, so cool. Is going from <coughs> proficient, there were four categories, yep. there are four categories. Yep. They don't Do agree. they in any <laughs> no. way no, correlate, they align? No, they, and they, they don't. And um, when we look at this slide, which is what was sent home, um, the the description, if, if you were to compare this report that sent home this year to last year's report, and you look at the descriptors of what does it mean to meet expectations, and if you compare that to proficient, the language would read very differently. Okay. Um, so yeah, the state was really on the webinars that we sat in, on the letters that was sent home from the commissioner, the acting commissioner, it was very clear that 
we don't it's want new, people to draw these right. these comparisons from years past to the new test. Okay. Um, the last thing that it was changed for Georgetown and every other district in the state was the distribution of student results within those four achievement levels. Um, if you think of in the past, uh, in the high school, because that didn't change, so that's a good comparison. We have, you know, 95% of our kids either, you know, proficient or advanced. For this new assessment, um, the state average, well, we can take a look at that now actually. Um, so this is a distribution of the projected statewide results for third through eighth grade ELA and math. Let me just break this down. So uh, the blue and red bars are the percentage of students that were either not meeting expectations or partially meeting expectations. So in those bottom two categories. And you can see in every grade level in both ELA and math, it's a hovering around 50%. And that's statewide. So 50% of the students in the state uh, will be in those bottom two categories this year. And then that goes to reason that 50% around there would be in those top two categories, um, either the meeting expectations or the exceeding expectations, those uh, yellow and green bars. So that's a very different distribution than what we had been, tip we had been used to seeing where we have 70, 80, 90, 95% of our students in those top two categories. Because the level of rigor of that assessment was raised, the standards are now, uh, have a higher expectation, and because it's a new assessment for everyone, uh, the state is kind of letting people know that don't expect to see that same distribution as you had in years past. And that score, and the scores, the scores within each span are wider now. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's more, they're <clears throat> yeah. wider. So there's a there's a thirty. So if we go back to that last slide, um, there's a thirty point span between each um, achievement level. So five hundred is the new cutoff, whereas I think with the old it was four twenty. I can't remember. Is that number to the apples to apples? Is that number calculated the same, or is that is is five hundred the new four twenty five? Like is that yes? Okay. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, here's a quote that I've pulled. I shared it with our teachers. I shared it with our Pembroke School Council. I will share it with our school committee now. This was taken from a PowerPoint that we listened to from the department. Uh, the results do not mean, this is in regards to the difference in distribution, the results do not mean that students learned less. The next generation MCAS measures in a different way. Remember, 2017 is the baseline year, the first year of a new assessment, and we expect scores to change over time as occurred when the legacy MCAS debuted in 98. So again, the, that 50-50 that split, they really wanted to get out in front of it and say, it's okay, like, we're, we're doing really good things. And the other thing is the partially meeting expectation um, as opposed to the needs improvement, that language is important because it means that you can be partially meeting expectations and be doing some things really well, but you may not just be over that hump in those few areas. So you could be partially meeting expectations but just need to make that little shift and you can get into that meeting expectations category. But we definitely are looking at the difference about what what does the kids look different if you're a if you're a low lower score end of that partially meeting versus an upper end of that partially meeting. What you would do for students is very different. So we'll go through uh, some of the results here, and um, I'm happy to explain anything that, that you have questions with. Um, but at the, the last slide, I have some key takeaways that I think are most important for us to, to, to look at. Um, so first, what I could pull that should look familiar is the high school data because it didn't change. The assessment didn't change. So uh, we have PPIs, we have CPIs, um, and as they have done historically in the past, the high school, um, again, knocked it out of the park last year. Um, in, in, so the top uh, graph there is ELA, the bottom is math, I have science on the next slide. Um, but they were coming in really high with the 96.5, or sorry, the 90, 99.1 uh, for all of our students, and we were at 99.0. Um, that is still above our target that was set for the school six years ago. Um, so our, our high school students for ELA are, are doing very well. Um, and they have the, the bonus points to show for that, which I'll show on the next slide. Um, same thing for, for mathematics. Uh, we you know, met our target for, um, 
for that. Uh, we're a little bit below for that six-year goal, but still, you know, if, if you're above the 95s, it's you're, you're you're playing with decimals there to really reach it up to up to 100. Um, so you can see that the students did very well. Uh, the top bar there is the, the science uh, for 10th grade. So again, um, 95.2 CPI, which is very impressive. Um, and then that, that bottom chart there are all of the, the bonus points that we can be awarded, and that's for specific uh, narrowing, gap, narrowing proficiency gaps, getting more students into the advanced category, pulling more students out of that warning category. Um, so 100 points is the maximum that you can receive for that extra credit. Um, and you can see in almost every category, we are earning some type of extra credit points for 2017. Um, that really helps this, you know, that the calculation that gives your cumulative PPI takes into account those bonus points. So our high school students, again, uh, they killed it last year and they did very well on that MCAS. Questions? So the only thing that, I, so I'm looking at like math and science. Yeah. So we got no points because we didn't get that 10% or more off of the warning failure. Correct. For math or science. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. That's just a tricky, as you're getting people out of, out of there, the fewer people you have, it's harder to actually get those points. Right. And, right. Yeah, I, I would be. At some point, you <laughs> can't realistically get those points. So yeah, and of the I think we have maybe three students that were in warning for math. So getting ten percent of those three out is it's yeah statistically <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. It's, yeah. Right. Um, so moving into the middle school, this is where we uh, start to see the the new assessment data and big picture. Um, I felt that this that these charts were the most relevant, especially knowing what the state averages were for those four um, achievement level categories. So if you remember that the baseline is about 50-50. 50% 50. 50. Uh, 50 of the students in the state were above, 50% of the students were below the, those top two and bottom two categories. That's where we can really start to draw a uh, distinction of how our students did comparatively to the state. And um, I'm happy to see that um, for the district data for eighth grade and for all of our grades, uh, you will see our blues are higher than the states and our reds are lower than the states, yeah, which means that we are, that we basically outperformed that state average of 50-50 split between the two. How about compared to what we would consider our peer group? <laughs> so we looked at our, at our admin team meeting, we were just throwing out districts because I can filter by, um, by district and comparatively. I mean, I think where, where you would expect to see us um, performing Equally, we, we were. I think it was, um, you know, I'm happy to get anyone, those, it's public, so I, I'm happy to, you know, if you're interested in seeing how another district did or how we did comparatively, I can certainly pull that. We weren't surprised when we saw any district that, were, you know, that, that we happened to name. Um, they shook out as we're where we should be. As we should be, yeah. Um, the bottom there uh, is the eighth grade science. Again, you'll see the old achievement levels there because the science assessment did not change. So that's why you see advanced, proficient, needs improvement, and warning. Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> Keep up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just go through these quickly because uh, they tell a very similar story um, from grade to grade, which I think is a very good thing. Uh, that means that all of our grades performed better than the state. Our, our blues are higher than our reds. And that deep red, um, that's our not meeting expectations. Um, we were very happy to see that all of those not meeting expectations were lower than the state averages as well. Because those are the, we really don't want to see any of our students not meeting expectations. Um, and when we have fewer than the state, that means that we're doing, we're on the right track, even with this new assessment. Um, sixth grade, far more students meeting expectations in the ELA, um, more students meeting expectations in math. Fifth grade, again, that bottom is the uh, science assessment because it did not change. Um, so that's just why the color is thicker there. Yes, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that with our science, new science curriculum, as we do that column, we'll yep. see those 
you know, science, we just never have really been all that satisfied with our science scores. Yeah, know? so that was the one area where we were, uh, so 49% of our students are in the top two, 51 are in the bottom two for science, and I think that um, is an indicator that <clears throat> we needed to make some type of shift with science at the elementary school, and hopefully we The state's not doing so hot either. That's but, true, right. You know, but, well, and the standards have changed. Yes, that they have assessment it is from is old, old state standard. yeah so that will be a, uh, the old science standards are very much content specific where you need to memorize and remember mm -hmm. science terms the new standards are not that at all it's very much scientific inquiry um, driven um, which is very new uh, fourth grade now this is uh, important to look at because fourth grade if you remember was one of the grades that took the new computer-based test so it's hard to measure how much of an impact or effect that had on our students with the assessments we can ask them about it we can get their their thoughts um, it's hard to suss out from the data how much that had an effect on them I just tell our teams that it is a variable to keep in mind when we're looking at fourth grade can I ask a, and I'm totally picking out data points which which isn't fair um, seven and five math so, so there's a lot of, you know, tall. <laughs> I'm oh, gonna get the colors short, wrong. Red. <laughs> but, but when we compare district to state on grade seven and five math, yep. we are much closer to the state average than the other grades. Yep. What's driving what's what's driving the other grades better, or driving seven and five? Right. Closer to that average. Um. And go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I have a, I have a succinct answer sure. answer for that question, and I think that that is one of the things that our vertical teams are doing this year is now that we have this data, we know what the new assessment criteria is, we can look at specific questions, yeah. we can look at specific areas. Um, the new standards have kind of their anchor standards, where mm -hmm. I know for fifth grade, there's a big anchor standard on volume. And there's a lot of questions on the fifth grade assessment for volume. So if we're not so if volume, we're not hitting volume, or if it's not coming up enough, right. we probably know that that may be a, a gap. Um, so without that, really that. we we need, yeah. we, we need yeah, to yeah. dive into it to find out where those gaps are. The good thing now uh, in the last three weeks, all of the data has now been published. Mm -hmm. So now we can pull the small group analyses. We can pull the student by student. You know. We, we have the released assessment, we know what standards were asked, and we can see for the, for the multiple uh, point questions, because now it's not multiple choice, it's either right or wrong, they're now like three or four point, or three or four step questions where you can get a one out of three, or a two out of three, or a three out of three, we can dive into how many points are our students getting of those multi-point questions and really dive into that. Um, but you know, you're seeing some of the things that we're seeing as well and we're diving into in grade levels. Well, I remember when we were talking about the level three status when yep. that occurred two years ago, I believe there was concern with like this, the fifth grade cohort. So they're now in seventh grade too. Right. Uh, okay. So sometimes right. that so. does happen. That's a good point, Cheryl. That is. Um, so just a, a few takeaways and then I'm happy to take any questions that you guys have. Uh, a couple positives that, that I've already mentioned, but all of our grade levels in both ELA and math were above the state averages as far as meeting and exceeding expectations. So that was, we, we were prepped when we were listening to those webinars. Right. We were kind of setting, yeah. we, we were, yeah. we, our expectations, I don't want to say were low, we just didn't know. And when we saw that all of our grades were above the, that 50-50 split, we were very happy. Um, another point that, that I want to make is we had, fewer students that were in those that not meeting expectations category in nearly all grades than the state um, again we we are we certainly want all of our students to be meeting or exceeding expectations if students are partially meeting expectations we know where their those strengths and areas of needs are um, we we certainly don't want to have our students not meeting expectations and that's you know it was nice to see that we were already above the curve there uh, something that we want to continue to think about um, and look at, which I know that we already would have done, but the, the initial data bears, bears it out, is that those high-need subgroups um, in some areas were not as successful as state averages um, on the new assessment. So it's still an area of need for Georgetown. We want to continue to work with those high-need subgroups. Um, we saw lots of success mm -hmm. from 
two years ago to last year. Um, it's harder to draw the comparisons from last year to this year because of the new assessment, but um, we know that we're doing good work with, with those subgroups. We just know that we're not, the work is not done yet, um, and we gotta keep on it. And you know, those, those kids have a, a bigger gap to, to narrow. Do you know what I mean? So we can look student by student, which we do look student by student, and you could see students that maybe were in the warning category last year, and now they're in the needs improvement, low needs improvement. You know, the, the goal is by the time kids get to 10th grade, mm -hmm. all, of our, all of our kids are getting 100% of our kids are passing MCAS, um, with very few exceptions needing to oh, take yeah. the test yeah. beyond 10th grade. They have until 12 to, to take it and, right. and pass it. So, you know, that speaks to the fact that A, the more the longer kids are exposed to the standards the more they build accumulation of their knowledge and I think B is also the fact that we have all this information and we use the information we can make adjustments that allow kids to to catch up how, how is the information from the state this year is it noticeably it was similar wasn't it I mean yeah. I'd say it was similar we got similar. item analysis okay. I know there was a lot of we didn't get student growth and renting yet. about what we would get yes mm -hmm. but was, I think they heard yeah the it message. was and I was worried at the beginning of the year because when I started in this position last year I was able to get right in and pull I learned a lot about the district <laughs> because I could pull all that data right away it wasn't made available until mm -hmm. mid-October yeah. uh, this year um, but fortunately when it was made available I were we are able to pull reports. All the important reports that we would want to pull, we're able to pull. It is helpful. Yes. Well, I think that the state clearly heard because the people who took PARC were very disappointed in the fact that the PARC test results were not at all what we're used to from MCAS to the point where you can really dig in and try to figure out what, well, what is behind that number. Mm -hmm. So I think that message was, was received um, that, you know, it, districts aren't going to be able to do much with this if you don't give us enough information so we can at least try to figure out what the problems are, the solution, the successes are. Thank you, Colin. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. I'm just gonna throw, I think it would be helpful, at least for me, to, s and I know what is the peer group is obviously a very difficult question, but to see, mm -hmm. I, I would just love to see us, because it's important to, yeah. to compare us to the state, but I think we also, clearly we want to be above the state average, but we also want to be Competitive. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, and any other reports that the committee would like, just for the sake of brevity, I didn't yeah, for sure. them here. But if there's anything specific that we you'd look, like to take a look at, at too, happy so. to run them off to you or, or meet with we you. Can, we discuss. can talk about which districts to pull, but we, yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, that light Thank is you. pretty strong. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Oh, Okay, so we do have the uh, middle high school principal search mm -hmm. here, too. But, um, just wanted to. Yeah, this is this is a draft. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted your thoughts on it. Um, you know, it is an important process. You know, it's, a, it's an important position, mm -hmm. and sure. so we want to be sure that there's some inclusiveness to it. It's not just me picking the person I want. Right? <laughs> um, so. You know, I, I'm interested to you know, hear your thoughts. And I did work with Peter on this too, because Peter, of course, when he was, you know, selected in Georgetown, he was, you know, he was applying to lots of different, to uh, different places. So you know, I'm just trying to pick his brain about, you know, so what were the steps? And then, of course, I've done a number of principal searches myself in other places that I've been, and I was a principal myself at one point, having gone through a search. So you know, there's all kinds of ways you can do it. Um, but I was trying to hit a timeline that, um, you know, completes the search at a, in a period of time when you're not likely to get somebody who might accept your job and then take another right. because there's other jobs that are still in the works, mm -hmm. but also not to wait so long that you really don't get a good pool. You're not, you're not in right. the pool. It's one thing if somebody leaves and you have no choice, you've got to scramble. But you know we're not in that situation. So the thought here would be that that Mar end of March is is that sweet spot. That's the perfect. That's what, that's what you know we think. And based on my discussion with colleagues, I know Newburyport High School is going to be looking as well. Oh. So within just within this region, there'll you know there'll be competition. some competition. Yeah. Yeah. 
So when they're advertised a position, who is the assistant to the superintendent? Oh, that's Laura. Laura calls okay, so just assistant. Okay. There's, not, there's no assistant so superintendent. I didn't create right. any position yeah, that, that I, I didn't I know did. about. <laughs> Good to know. I could have written Laura Markary and it would mean something. <laughs> I think my... I think my biggest takeaway or my biggest question that came out of this mm -hmm. was sort of the, the school committee role in the process mm -hmm. ends really quickly. Um, I guess I was surprised to see, knowing that there are, and I didn't count it, 6, 10, 15, 17 people on the screening committee, mm -hmm. I guess I was a little surprised not to see a school committee member mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I was kind of envisioning the community member would probably be the school committee member, because that's kind of the role you play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you could end up being a parent as well. You know, all of you are parents. So, so how does let me how does the screening committee get selected? Well, um, what I would do is I would. Um, so that's why I'm trying to identify different kinds of roles that mm -hmm. people would play. Um, and then we see we assess the interest. We see how many people want to be on it. It might not be a problem at all. Right there, there we may struggle to get, you know, enough people in a particular area. Um, and then I, I think we try to figure out the most fair way to do it. I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to pulling people's names out of a hat. Because I, I do feel that sometimes, like, how do you, if you've got seven parents and you want four of them, mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you choose? How do you like, do right. I sit there and go, oh, well, I like Barbara you know, Linares you, yeah. better, or I think Michael Hinchcliffe would be somebody I wouldn't want to deal with, so I'm not even going to, you know, I mean, it, some people want to just know that there's some fairness to it. Right. Um, and again, I'm not opposed to including the school committee. It's just that, generally speaking, my experience is school committee members are not on the, on the, on the search committee necessarily. Although Barbie was on for one of the principals, I think, right, from the school committee, right. I guess I, I'm, 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 and I, totally understood. It, it seems well, like a disconnect between it. we have strategic goals and strategic plan and and all this stuff, yeah. and. I guess I'm surprised to not see a school committee member in there to represent those goals at that. Cho choosing a principal is this is the person who's supposed to embody all those goals and visions and all that and all that stuff. And I don't mean to put it that way. It's it's no. obviously all important. Right. Exactly. Um, and that doesn't necessarily align with what parents might want, what students. So it, it's putting a voice to the stuff that we spend a lot of time on. Over and over and over again, we we did we spent an hour talking about our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. I would be curious to know, you know, if we look at the parents, the community member, the students. I'll, I'll leave the staff members out. How many of those? I mean, that's half the committee that I don't think could speak necessarily to the strategic plan. No, I just want to make make sure that there's voice to. Yeah. It seems like there should be a voice to. What we discuss every week or every other week as compared with the broader community. Mm -hmm. So is your, are you advocating to have? A, I am, a seat? yeah. yeah. And, and, I'm, and I'm saying one out of 17, not, certainly not a quorum. A quorum, yeah. you know, certainly not a quorum. But not a, I'm not saying it should be two out of this, mm -hmm. just a voice in there. Mm -hmm. is my, right. Because is my I don't think you're going to have difficulty finding um, parents. Parents. No, I don't think so. I don't think we will have. I think you may end up having to pick it out of a hat. I think so. Too. Because this is a big deal. It's I mean, a it's big been deal. 15 years. And mm -hmm. yeah. um, so deal. to have, like, you know, we are parents, um, we are community members, but to not have, like, per se, it say one school committee member mm -hmm. on there, I think it would be difficult because our names might not be pulled out of that hat if it came to that. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to putting somebody on there. I'm, I'm also just trying to make sure that we, we, we make sure we balance the roles. Like, I don't want anybody on the committee thinking the school committee has a bigger role. Right. Well, and that's why I'm saying the, one now. Because, no. because they're sitting there, right? right? That people don't say, well, you know, well, Barbie's school committee, of course, you know, she's, she's going to have a higher vote. No, no, that's not how it's scheduled to be. But I, if, as long as we can make sure that everybody is understanding of exactly mm -hmm. who's, you know, who's representing what. I don't. I don't really have a problem with it. I think that that was the thinking behind it was that, okay. that, that there, you know, that it it was really, you know, the school committee of course would have the opportunity to you know be part of focus groups and tell me what you're looking for and all that kind of stuff. 
but at the end of the day it was a school based committee because it's basically going to affect the people in the schools more the the way i was pulling in the strategic plan part is that through the administrative team because they also have to you know if you look at there's a step mm -hmm. in here that they're that they're going to be meeting with them too because as just <coughs> as um the school is going to be working with the principal obviously intimately we're choose we're we're a little team we're, we're choosing people on the team that we know you know are going to bring something to you know they're going to add depth to our team right they're going to bring something you know new and special right so so that that's kind of how i was balancing that but I, I don't have a problem putting a school committee member on there just as long as you know we all understand that yeah. you know one member yeah. of the team mm -hmm. i love the fact that there are four students on there i think that's really really important well you know my experience when, as we've been doing these kind of searches in this district you know like whether whether it's through hiring a principal or like when we've done all those assistant principals over the years you know the kids the kids add a lot of value and they and they appreciate being part of that part of the process so this know. could be quite a long process so how will that um, for the so, student well for everybody so I know in the past when I have been on those committees it's it's like you are required to attend each meeting because right. how can you go in and say right. that, if you're you know, going to interview people you you, you have to right so I mean for, for students well, I think that because be there's clear. a lot of um, so would they be taken out of class and then going over like well, I probably the wouldn't day. schedule these during the day I probably wouldn't schedule a lot of interviews during the day so it would be like a after the initial, late afternoon. initial interviews and theoretically I would they're probably the, the candidate I would assume would be working working too yeah right. so yeah. right but, um, I mean you know when they come to the district you know when we narrow it down and they come to the district and they spend like the day here or they spend a couple of hours here then certainly we might do some of that so but the sure. students would be playing the same role as these other yep. like attending yep. every yep. meeting so yep. then that I would, would I would I would hope so explain to them just what right. the level what of the commitment is commitment. yeah 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 because I I just I do feel like this is a really important job it mm -hmm. is what is the the goal in terms of the number of applications and I know there, there's there's quality for like you don't want a hundred if 75 of them are junk Right. But so, what's when? When yeah. can we say that we have a good pool? Pool. Is it two, five, ten, twenty? No, I I would like, expect in the I would expect in the first round that you'd have anywhere between twenty and thirty applicants. Okay. In the first round, mm -hmm. right? And I think that would get screened down to uh, you know usually it depends you know obviously you set the criteria and then you decide okay here are all the people who sort of meet the criteria and then when you decide who gets an interview so. You know, usually you'll see anywhere between, you know, nine and eleven people in a first round of interviews. You know, so you screen it down. Some mm -hmm. will just not meet your criteria. Right. Um, and then, and then you narrow, then that, then you narrow it down, and then usually you don't have any more than four finalists. Although, you know, if somebody's a close fifth, you might. Right. But, you know, you want to be careful too because you don't want to narrow it down right to two. And then either of them take your job, right? Mm. And then it's very much a. <laughs> so you so so you have to. Well, and then it's A or B instead of A versus the pool. It's, right, right, yeah. right. But you know, a lot of times if you're down to three or four candidates and you bring them all into the district, you know, you you'll, you know, you'll you'll see the the difference. The spread, yeah. Yeah, you'll see the spread. But then it does; it becomes a crapshoot, right? So you know, then you want to you want to make sure that the people that are in your pool are going to take the job if you offer it to them, mm -hmm. right? Because right. there's yeah. nothing worse than that, right? right? You know, right. Everybody's got their heart set on candidate A, and you know, candidate A isn't even likely to take your job because they're finalists in two other places that they, you know, right. so so it, you know, it, we have to just play the process out. But I just wanted to, you know, lay out the process. You know, so that we yeah, can have a discussion sure. about it. Mm -hmm. so Clear and well thought out. I right. want to talk with the faculty about it. You know, it, I just wanted to, yeah. you know, get, get it started because I, I don't want to be in a situation where we're, you know, scrambling. we're scrambling. Yeah. Good to have all those dates. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We have a financial report. Oh, it's oh, going to be right. a short discussion. Yeah, right. Does anybody have any questions about it? or Is it just housekeeping? Yes, yes. it's just housekeeping. Yep. 
preparing for next week's financial. <laughs> we can't accept any donations. No, no. either. So we'll do that. Good to see uh, you. Uh, thank you. Thank Thanks you, Colin. Good, good to see them nonetheless. Good evening. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I did want to uh, take some time, not to put Michael on the spot or anything, but I <laughs> want to um, thank him and um, tell him how much we as a committee appreciate the fact that he's gone, gone to the to MASC and the yeah. SS oh, conference yes. the fourth time. Fourth time. Um, wow, we greatly appreciate it because it's a long, <laughs> it's a long few days mm. of, you know, but um, I know some school committees, the whole group goes, which is great too, but that just doesn't, doesn't. It it for it's everybody's schedule, right? So we really do appreciate the time that you take away from your own family and, uh, yes. you know, to go and see all the things that are going on and then come back and report it to us. So what do you want to tell us about <laughs> this visit? It, 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 was a, it was good again. Um, I, I think, and I feel like I've said this every year, I think it's, it's good to see what other school districts are working through. I think some of their challenges are very similar. Um, sure. And it's also good to see some ways where we're, I don't want to say ahead, but you know, th there are schools talking about doing, hey, PBIS, PBIS would be a good idea, mm -hmm. and we're further down the road in terms yeah. of pursuing that strategy. Did they have anything on start school later? There this year? was no. No, so last year it was. No, correct. Last year they signed yeah. a resolution or something. Last right? year there was a. It was. Wasn't, wasn't yeah, that they, yeah. And that, yeah, so on the. So and maybe, then there was I just thought maybe they'd then, have like another. Not unless I missed a panel. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't I see I did it on the look agenda. at the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, but then after I looked, I'm like, I should have looked specifically for that. Yeah, so it wasn't I don't, I'm pretty sure there was yeah, not. Okay. Um, there was a lot of, the, the focus was on the opioid crisis. Sure. Um, so there's a, lot, so, of, a right? lot of focus on that. Um, wow. At least one of the keynotes, if not two, were addressing that. Wow. Um, but no, it was a good, it was a good conference again. Um, I guess I don't have specifics. What so sessions did you go to, Michael? Oh. I mean, and just in general, like. General topic. Yeah, I did. You I went. The keynotes, I know. But they're the like, keynotes, um, which, which are which are interesting, but also very. They're keynotes. They're they're flashy and big, and, and yeah. um, I went, probably not surprisingly, to one or two on budgeting, um, kind of strategies and, and what other schools are facing, and we're facing very similar challenges. Mm. Um, I did that. I did um, a. There was social media. One, I guess, more than opi opi opioid, it was also more a little. I don't want to say wellness, but a little more kind of holistic. Right. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Just what we're talking social, about. Social, yeah, less social, emotional, more um, holistic, like helping kids be resilient. Be resilient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's a good way right. to put it. And um, don't take everything to heart. Be don't take it. Yeah, exactly. Know how to advocate for yourself. Exactly. Like, yeah. Suicide prevention. Um, there was a little bit of that, I think, in there. Um, so yeah, I, I did budget. I would actually have to look at my my notes and my list. Um, you totally did put me on the spot. Um, but yeah, so. So was the attendance, did you think it was comparable to years past? It was comparable, yeah. Yeah, um, which I think is good because I think four years ago, honestly, I think it was a good size and it got bigger. Oh. And so there are, if you don't get to the session 15 minutes early, you don't get a don't seat. Get a seat. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, although that said, there are very clearly big sessions that a lot of people want to go to, and then there are others that you can show up a half an hour late and you could get pick from seat. dead seats. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of a mix of, of I really of wish that. they would change the location. You know, know, like know. even every couple of years, yeah, like change. It's in Hyannis, and I, you know, I, I feel the same way. But you got it. You can't just go down for the day, really. Right. I mean, well, I guess you can, but down, well, and, and down yeah, a lot of the long. state has to go really far yeah, to get right. to Hyannis. Like, yeah. yeah. It's not like it's not it's like Marlboro. Mass, yeah. Yeah. Usually they'll hit Marlboro. Yeah, that's true. Like yeah, somewhere. We do. And Marlboro has so many conference, a lot of conference centers. Yeah. Yeah. But that's good. I'm. Glad that it was oh, good and the good. weather was yeah was weather good. was good so it wasn't like the the traffic was difficult yeah. or things like that they didn't close down well, 95 on saturday which is helpful like they oh, did last right. year yeah i remember <laughs> that yeah right getting in and out yeah um, well that's good so yeah, glad good. again we appreciate you going and and taking the time yeah 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 i feel like that was a vague i'll, pr I'll, I'll formulate thoughts i'm waiting for pam to say how is the food 
Oh. <laughs> right, she usually does say that. I don't eat Did there. Did you enjoy so. it? How was it? <laughs> you didn't eat? I don't eat there, no. I don't. You don't? Yeah. Not at the conference. How come? They're, well, I mean, all their keynote, they're all, I mean, you can... Are they luncheon? Are they luncheon keynotes? They have lunch and dinner keynotes every day. Um, and I, I, I think keynotes are important. I don't necessarily see the value of spending... Right. It's a sixty dollar lunch or any oh, dollar. So you oh, can you can oh, take it's not part no, of it's not part of it. So you can yeah. take oh, I, I think there is value that. in the two hundred dollar ticket price. Yeah. But you can spend you can easily spend five I or six hundred bucks. Lunches and dinners aren't included. No. Oh that wow. And they're all because they're all bigger speakers mm. and Wow, I did not know that. Mm. Um yeah. so and I have not necessarily seen the value of sitting in a room of three hundred people listening to a so, speaker. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so. Wow. Yeah, because... The I mean, subway across like the, the street is great. Because I'm thinking like, <laughs> thinking like the superintendent's conference that they have in the summer. It, You know, all the food it is included. included. Yeah. But, it, but it's done... It's a much it's, smaller scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm event. sure it is a much smaller scale. And it, and it isn't... I mean, in fact, well, at the day of... A day on yeah. the hill. I mean, the lunches. That's oh, the right. Yeah, point. Yeah. That's the, yeah. Yeah. That's what you did. Actually, I don't know. Do they still <laughs> do that? Because they had. I know they didn't last. Well, they didn't last times. year because yeah, I don't know. Because all the vocational something. schools did the right. did the lunch, and it was. So I'm delicious. hoping it'll be on this year. <laughs> if not, you're not going again, right, Pam? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to give it some thought. <laughs> Well, that's good. Thank you. Sorry, but thank you. If it is on, I highly recommend everyone <laughs> joining. Yeah. That, is a, that is a nice one. Yes. Okay, so since we can't vote on uh, any of these things, let's just quickly do a subcommittee uh, report, and then we will be done for the evening. So I, sure. did you have a safety meeting today? We is did. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, how'd that go? Um, it was very, it was very well. We went through a number of topics. It was shorter than usual. Um, we didn't have, I don't know, there weren't that many people. I, well, Margaret there. had a community gathering. It was her Veterans oh. Day thing. So, oh, okay. so, you know, we wanted to, yeah. several of us wanted to go to that. Right. So, so Vicki Lake came by from NRT. And uh, so the bus issues continue to improve in general um, due to crowding on bus two, which we had talked about before at the previous meeting. Uh, change for the Pembroke buses will begin after Thanksgiving. Um, when the Pearly convenience stop will be switched to bus one from bus two. Right. Cindy, uh, Cindy McKenzie of NRT will help to write a letter to parents and we will communicate with parents in three ways. The bus driver will give a letter to the students, the schools will send a letter out to the parents, and Margaret will put it in her this week. This week. Wow. Yeah. That's so, good. Okay. And that's why we're waiting until yeah. Thanksgiving because right. we feel we have a window where we can do all that. Right. We did discuss um, when the children are getting back at the end. The latest right now is uh, 340 to 345. Mm -hmm. So that's... Most of the routes are finishing before 330, mm -hmm. but there's one that, you know... That's bus four. Yeah, bus right. four. They're, so they're not getting on at 245, though, right? Are they getting on, like, three? much clo Much closer. Much closer to 245. Oh, okay. So they are on the bus for an hour. Much Yeah. Uh, although bus four is... It isn't the case for bus four. Bus four just has the longer route, route and it gets there last. So that's why bus four is the last one in. Okay. okay. But we haven't been hearing from parents that they, you know, their kids are getting home late. Mm -hmm. You know, we're before we we're hearing four o'clock or after. Right. And I think hope, hope and um, uh, has has said that it's they're they're bringing the kids right out as opposed yep. to sitting in the calf. So they're loading more quickly mm -hmm. so you know Good. they think the bus drivers have really been working yeah so things are getting better it. It, it definitely They're sounded in, like things improving. were getting better moving in the right direction Good. Right. Um, so then school reports Margaret reported that we had a, a she conducted a fire drill last mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. and um, communication between all the adults involved was good there was before just a little some of the uh, the administrators and the fire people didn't know each other, but now they do, and they're communicating, so that's that's good. Um, and they're going to conduct another one in a few weeks. Margaret, about a month. Didn't f they didn't feel, they didn't feel that, that the kids were, maybe some of them taking it as seriously, or mm -hmm. didn't feel like the behavior was what they were hoping it would be, so Margaret right. wants to do another one. Review student she, expectations. She, yeah, she, she reviewed the expectations, but now she <laughs> wants to 
give them another shot to yeah. Yeah, yeah. get it right. Yeah. So the public safety report, um, Officer Henry was there, and he talked about the middle school presentation that was on Wednesday, which, by the way, I, I went to on social media. Mm -hmm. He talked a little bit about vaping. And um, I thought he was very, very effective. And the students, you know, they felt comfortable enough to, to ask questions, yeah. and they were processing it. And he had a couple little video clips in, be in between. Um, and he, he talked about, you know, the real situations that people get themselves, and young people, but, you know, many people get themselves into, uh, uh, making assumptions about how they put themselves out there in, in, the, in cyberspace mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, not quite understanding the, the implications of that and the repercussions. So he, and he talked about civil rights violations, and he talked about, we talked about cyberbullying, and we talked about a lot of important well, that's Stuff. good. Sexting. Yeah. Sexting. Good. Yes, yeah. Can I ask um, a, an Officer Henry question? Um, and not to be critical, because I think his, his traffic directing is great. <laughs> He's getting there later and later, I find. Coming out of Pembroke oh, after yeah. picking up my daughter, I am sitting there as he is arriving and he takes a few, and, and uh, this sounds very critical, as he's arriving and taking his poles out and getting ready, traffic is already challenging as he's setting up. So I'm wondering, I think so it's a matter a of- So that's a pickup? A pickup. Yeah. I think it's I a matter of five if, minutes or oh, 10 yeah. minutes. You know, I wonder if he's is, stuck at the schools Maybe doing that, something. Yeah. yeah, he's always coming from, like from the Town. high school side when he's getting there. So I don't know, I mean, mm. I have no idea obviously where he is, but- mm. um, I'll ask. I, he helps traffic immensely, and he I'm does. finding that he it gets does. there later, Huge. so. Yeah. And people, I, people know, too. I think I almost even think, because I run there in the morning usually, so it's almost like I think people from other towns that come through Georgetown know, too, that, okay. Yeah, I see him every morning. Yeah, yeah you got to be, you know, there's a police up there now, and I think people I'm are sure more do. aware of aware. it, which is yeah. great. The flash but he does a help. Flash yeah. Light. Yeah, in the, in the, in the <laughs> Those polls. giant yeah. cones. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> well, he said several times before he had all of those. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I am going hit. I know. I can well, see that. Well, because that corner it is, is a tough corner yeah. if you're yeah. not watching what you're right. doing. It is. Big green people have to make a big swing out to the The sights aren't great. Yeah, yeah. The sight lines aren't great there. Yeah. But Elm Street is looking fabulous, don't you think? Looking much better. I actually haven't gone down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been very avoided that area. And then so next week, Henry, Officer Henry is going to be talking to the fifth and sixth graders about responsibility, which is the Pembroke theme of the month. Um, and on Thursday and Friday, Alice training for students, for Pembroke students, will take place. Okay. On Wednesday. They've got to train the kids who didn't have it. Yeah. Right. Um, and on Wednesday, November 29th, at Georgetown Middle High School's the CVS Pharmacy is going to make a presentation with Officer Henry. Uh, to speak to the students about opioid, the dangers of, of opioids and addictions and how people find themselves in this situation and um, best practices to avoid the situations. Um, the time for that presentation will be 9.50 to 10.45 a.m. for the high school and 10.45 a.m. to 11.30 for the middle school. The 29th. I presume mm -hmm. the parents will be invited to it like they I, I'm were to the that, that social they, media I'm, I'm presentation. I'm assuming that they can come, but I, I don't know that. For yeah, a fact, I don't know that I'm for a fact assuming. yet. That's okay. Great. Um, that's it. Was, did I cover? Yeah. Well, the other thing briefly we talked about was the meeting last night on the use on the survey. Oh. oh yeah. Right. Just to debrief a little bit on that. That's what we we talked a little bit about that. Okay. Um, budget and finance we're meeting on Tuesday we just want to be sure also that you know when parents are considering these surveys that they're looking at the right survey and not the mm. wrong survey because yeah there the, might the be something on Facebook that's yeah up on Facebook and right. that's not well we urge people to go to the schools because that's right. where the the actual survey is that will be distributed to right the and, students, and we're so. more than willing to sit with anybody and yeah. you know mm -hmm. go through the yeah. go through the questions because the, the student at the youth risk behavior survey is different than the assets and behavior survey the stu that that risk survey is all about risky behaviors this is demographic information asset information like what supports do kids have in place and then there clearly are some questions around um, risk behaviors but I do want to reiterate again 
if people have any questions or concerns to really just reach out to the school and it is not a hard sell if people do not want their children to take the, the thing all they have to do is drop an email or complete the paper that Margaret attached to her email it, it, it shouldn't be causing people angst you know um, and I, I do think that one of the nice things I, I think I might have said of the email that came out of that was that um, you know there was discussion about it you know what happens at the end of the survey like do, you know kids walk away and you know maybe have discussions on their own or whatever but how do you close the loop a little bit and you know the discussion was that there would be a script written for teachers that basically would um, teachers would would uh, let the kids know that if there was anything that they feel that they weren't they weren't comfortable about or that they want to talk more about here are all the people that they could should should feel free to uh, talk to about Henry told me that after the session that he did uh, the other day there were some kids you know who approached him after to, to talk uh, to get clarification a little more questions about the the sexting for example like some things that he said that they wanted to make sure that they really you know understood, understood. so I mean that that's the yeah, goal right, right is that you want to have the kids see people as helpful and useful not something that you know they get information from people who really don't can't really help them right. so I thought that was a really positive thing that came out of the meeting with the the parents that were there and the staff that were there last night well, so how was the turnout well there were only three parents that came and then uh, Elizabeth Carroll was there I was there Tina from um, Tina Loss was there um, and uh, Margaret Margaret was there um, no, and the who am I? I think that's it um, so you know we had a cozy little you know meeting around the round cafeteria table but uh, you know I think the the discussion was good I think the things that came out of it were were good there was nothing that you nothing that you didn't say and we didn't feel when we were looking at it for the first time you know people could see the value of what the data could could bring mm -hmm. but it was kind of like just hard for me to imagine that my kids gonna take it you know like right. and what about the conversation that I don't really want to have right now it's I'm not ready I don't think my child's ready for it all the things that we talked about there was no surprises um, but you know the fact that we you give people the, the opportunity to talk about it I think is the value of it Definitely. Well, and people can important. still Oh, yeah, people can forward still, and yeah, absolutely. We want that if they have questions I mean, I think or concerns. Somebody right. said on the Facebook so, page today there was those were suggestions. Some I didn't see it, but people said there were some suggestions on there. You know, go see go the, to go, the school, go to the school, and look at the survey if you right. have any questions. Call the school, but I think the survey the that's posted is a Email little misleading school. because mm -hmm. it is not the it's assets not the and behavior survey. Right mm -hmm. survey. So it would be like, for example, there was something some. Well, they talked it? about the words freebasing. Freebasing. I mean, I, I've looked at the survey. the survey. I can't find that. that. But it may be in the youth risk behavior survey because yeah. it is a different survey. So okay. just really encourage people to, you know, go to the school and, and, and get the information because we're very happy to talk to them. Okay. Um, governance. We have met. We have yes. met. Yeah. And we are working diligently on the <laughs> travel uh, field trip policy and we should be bringing that to the next meeting next yep. meeting yep. Yep. Uh, negotiations we're meeting next week, next week. Next so that, start, that's 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 yeah yes yeah. yep we're good. starting to start we're starting to start <laughs> public relations we have not met no we have not met no but we have a meeting schedule there I think there is schedule yeah. um, the end of this month I feel like right it's I think oh, it's on the you. bottom of the agenda did I think I tried to pull on thing what about superintendent evaluation um, we so have that, not done that but we have to get it we have not done that I have right yeah, my note here to get a meeting with Cheryl right yeah. um, Suzanne we need Suzanne right so I can okay. put something out right because we started a doodle with Laura. I know with Laura but I can't find any of that okay stuff. but that's all right I'll, just like I made the other appointments I'll send you guys out some times. I know Suzanne probably should do it after school. So well, actually, she did say she was available after eleven thirty on Fridays. Oh, she is. Okay, okay. Is that does does that work for you on it Fridays? Does. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's try that. Maybe we can shoot for next Friday. Not tomorrow, obviously. But right. The I was just going to say very briefly. CIP. 
oh, met yeah, last night. Yeah. Um, in good news, there is money, theoretically, Yay. for this year, looking yeah. at up to about $300,000. The problem yeah. is, is we didn't fund, essentially, we didn't fund any projects for the last two years, so there's lots and lots of demands, and, sure. and stuff has been rearranged. Um, mm. But there could possibly be money Good. available. That's great. So when's the next meeting? Uh, we are meeting Sleeping. next week, oh, and cool. then schools, assuming Mike is available, presenting November 29th. If right. that's yep. the yep. I spoke to him. So today. the, the okay. list that Mike handed out at Department Head. Yeah, that was. Is that is that an old list, or that's the list that these guys yes. are talking about? No, it's, it's, it's a different list. Okay. Okay. He had a different list last week. Because, because I was thinking it didn't represent the priorities that no. you, had you all had it. talked about. There was so. a oh. pretty clear indication last night that the trim project would not fly. Okay. fly. It needs to be. There's so a, there's we, a pretty well, strong we, consensus go to that, right. that it, is a, it is a project that should and or it's a historic I don't say building. must be funded by CPC because okay. it is not. We have a date with oh, CPC. No. We, we it went through the, the CPC. We submitted. I well, think I put it in here. Yeah, yeah you put um, was it in there? Or did I just yeah. saw the windows. I thought in, oh. in whatever oh, was in our. Oh, you know what? I think it is Michael the windows in here, but the Michael. windows. But he was going to try okay. to okay. update you know what? it with the trim. Okay. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. Spoke to him today about that. Yeah. It was a pretty clear indication. Well, well, actually, they funded it once. They, they did CPC fund, did. CPC funded yeah. it once. So I think they would fund it again. So. Okay. Well, well, that's good. For that. Good. Yeah. But but so we still we still had the so there's still the truck and, and, and the truck. The truck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Uh, I do want to just remind people that at eleven o'clock, um, eleven a.m. on Saturday, they're having a Veterans Day. Um, oh. Celebration Memorial at ha uh, Harry Merch Park. I know it's always a, a very nice um, reminder to all of us as to why we celebrate this day. It's very special. So I urge people to go. I know the selectmen all go. There's some veterans there that are always so happy to see the kids and mm -hmm. people show up. It's going to be chilly on Saturday, so I yeah. would definitely dress warm. But 11 a.m. at Harry Merch Park. Right. Um, Anybody have any? I know the PTA auction. We can still talk PTA about that. Auction. November 18th. Yes, it's um, coming together, all the little pieces. Yeah, I've seen some yeah. pictures on uh, Facebook. Of good. Really awesome project. Great really things. Two yeah. or three properties left on the Monopoly. Yeah, board. I saw right. that. That's the great. Corporate oh, sponsorships. Nice. And buy your tickets. Buy your tickets. It's going to be a fun night. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fun. It will be fun. Good. Okay, uh, there is no need to have an executive session. Uh, I don't need to vote to end the meeting, uh, but we are going to sign off at 9.28 p.m. I wish everyone a happy, safe, long weekend. Thank you.